Okay, so Rob, what episode are we on today? We're on today? 375. 375 it is. Gang, I don't know about you. You know, every once in a while you get the song stuck in your head. The other day my son comes to me and he's whistling. And the oldest, we're talking Tico. Hmm. He's whistling, and I don't know what he's whistling. I said, wait a minute, what song are you whistling? And it goes like this. Folks, if you know this song, put it below, and then Vinny and I are going to sing. Vinny didn't even know we're going to do this, because you know the words better than I do. Pull up the lyrics. I'm going to whistle it first. What do you mean? I got it. I got it. Guys, guys, sorry. You're about to hear Vinny's voice. I'm going to whistle it. I'm going to whistle it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so he whistles this, then all of a sudden, I played this maybe a hundred times on repeat because it's one of my favorite movies, okay? And here's how it goes, Vinny. Whenever you're ready. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, go. We're going to go from the top. No, oh, okay. Okay, you ready? All right, yeah. All right on guys, three. from the One, top. Two, three. I'm just a little bit caught in the middle. Life is a maze and love is a riddle. I don't know where to go. Can't do it alone. I've tried and I don't know why. What a freaking Come on. song. I'm going to cry in here. Holy freaking moly. What a great what movie. Well, name the movie say? quick. Moneyball. Somebody said finally Moneyball. Shout out to Broken Profit. Anyways, yeah. it's got nothing to do with today's podcast. If there's a producer though out there and you guys are yeah. feeling this, the Assyrian. We're going to tour. 50 City tour. 50s and Me just and do that song. Yeah. I'm yeah. just That's a little girl lost in I it. would be so <laughs> God, curious to know, you know, to know that what, song, but I'm the gay one. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Listen. Type one in the chat. <laughs> if you think he is. Fine. <laughs> so finally Adam and I we got a lot of stories to go through today. A lot of crazy stuff going on. There's people that are bringing Ozempic to gyms. Yes. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of weird facts going on with people that are looking great using this one drug that's not good for you, but it's being sold now at gyms. So hang tight. We'll talk about that. There's something that happened. Uh, uh, guys, someone's audio is on. Okay. And something happened yesterday, I think, with the Supreme Court. What was the score? There was like a 9-0 score. Not like it's a big deal or anything. but No, it's not a big deal. Not, but not, it, was a, it, was a, it was like it a— was, it, was, it was a terrible day for some people. Horrible. Horrible for some people. We'll, we'll talk about what happened with Colorado. For those of you guys that are in California and you were worried about Panera Bread, uh -oh. their, their soup price is going up. What? the chicken panera, you know, the price is panini going up. It's not. With the help oh. of uh, uh, Newsom, which is fantastic because he was able to do something for Panera Bread's minimum wage for the employees to not, not go as high as everybody else because, well, you'll find that here yeah. in a minute. Just hang tight. Kellogg's CEO comes out with a new commercial. Okay, you know Kellogg's, like cereal Kellogg's. They come out with a new commercial. And guess what they're trying to get their consumers to do? You ready for this? Are you ready for this? <laughs> they want you to have cereal for dinner to save money. Really? What a bunch of nice people, oh, right? Just sugar before you pass out. You know out? what, bro? Yeah. Before you go to sleep, replace all this $25 you're spending. Instead, have cereal for dinner <laughs> and save that money, right? Hey, I like Ken that one. Kentucky Democrat proposes child sex dolls for pedophiles. This is a Newsweek story. Okay, it, it may be one of the weirdest stories I've seen for the week. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We cover that. We cover that. We cover that. Nikki Haley. Guess what city she wins? State. She wins. D.C. No. She wins D.C. Republican primary. But do you know really what that really means? We'll, we'll cover that, what it really means, because it sounds like a victory. It is, mm -hmm. except it's a weird kind of a victory. And then APEC uncorks a hundred million dollar war chest to sink progressive candidates. Adam's got some stuff to say about that. Manchin gets pissed because a guy gets in his face, cursing him out. Manchin gets up ready to brawl and fight. Instead, his handler, security guard, I don't know if you saw this. Great push. Shoves the guy. Great push. Is Bounced good him move? off the wall. Is it a bad move? <laughs> should the guy get arrested? What should happen to him? We'll talk about that. Austin at the brink of disaster. Oh, God. As police staffing shortages set city back over 15 years, policies especially failed, epically failed. We'll talk about that. Oregon lawmakers passed bill undoing part of the state's drug decriminalization law. 
And then true inflation was officially leaked. You ready? It peaked in 2022, late 2022, at 18% and still hovers at around 88%. I'm sorry, not 88%. This was market watch, 8%. So meaning when they said it's only like 7, 8, 9, 10%, it was really 18% is the true number. Musk versus Sam Altman. He's not happy with what happened because it was supposed to be a nonprofit, turned it into a profit. Now he's claiming it's a $7 trillion company. It's a mess. Border officials see massive new surge at the southern border. Order and more than 8 million asylum seekers will soon live in the U.S., up 167%. This is if we don't do anything about it. BlackRock admits ESG advocacy could prove bad for business. Israel boycotts Gaza ceasefire talks after Hamas rejects their demand. RuPaul, you better work, folks. You better RuPaul work. building fortified <laughs> compound in red state. We are moments away from effing civil war. He, he must have said. talked to Mark Zuckerberg. He ain't fooling around. Yeah. Okay? Oklahoma school investigated after video shows kids licking toe, toes <laughs> for fundraiser. You send this to me. I, I said, thought it was a spoof. I'm was like, that real? This he, is real? Hold on. For three texts back and forth, he's like, this is not real. I go, no, no. It's real. Well, we're going to look at this here. It's bother. Yeah, it bothers me. Ryan Garcia's ex-wife says the boxers may seem fine, but he's not. He posted a video. I'm, we'll talk about Ryan yeah. Garcia. I'm a little bit concerned. We had Sean O'Malley on here yesterday. And then T now faces charges after pushing friend off 60 foot Washington Bridge. I don't know if you saw this no. video. Dude, you got a friend. A friend. Rob, did I send this video to you? I think you have it, right? We'll, we'll, we'll get into Who that. Who needs as well. enemies like that? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I mean, it's, when you see this, it's disturbing. Anyways, let's go into the most uh, trending story. Unanimous question mark. Top takeaways from Supreme Court's ruling to keep Trump on the ballot. This is. USA Today story, it was very hard for them to write this article, but they did their best. <laughs> thumbs the Supreme Court unanimously ruled against efforts to bar uh, former President Trump from running again, emphasizing the need to prevent a state-by-state -state patchwork on Trump's candidacy. Trump celebrated the decision as a big win for America. Conversely, the challengers saw the ruling as a narrow technical off-ramp that didn't address the full story. Liberal justices, including Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Kagan, and Ketanji Brown Jackson criticized the majority for exceeding necessary bounds, echoing Chief Justice John Roberts' stance on avoiding unnecessary ruling. Justice Amy Coney Barrett emphasized the unanimity of the decision with acknowledging differences in opinion. And the results, 9-0. I believe what the results was, Tom. So, Tom, how big of a deal is this story? I mean, everybody's seeing it. Some are not selling it as a big deal. Some are saying this is the biggest decision of the last eight years. How big was this? This is huge. Um, back on February 8th on this podcast, we talked about how big it was going to be because the opening arguments, and people need to understand, America needs a civics lesson. Excuse me, American media needs a damn civics lesson because they're – lobbying the Supreme Court as if you lobby the court to get what you want. Oh, just support Colorado. Keep them off the ballot. That's not the way it works. And you don't want the back end of this. How big was this? Let me tell you how big this was. You had the Supreme Court hearing. First of all, they agreed to hear the case. They didn't have to do that. But Solicitor General and four justices is what it takes. Says, OK, we'll agree to hear the case. So they hear the case. February 8th, oral arguments are heard. And what was very interesting I think the question, here's a quote from the Supreme Court. I think the question you have to confront is why a single state should decide who gets to be president of the United States. In other words, you know, this question of whether a formal president is disqualified for insurrection to be president again, that sounds very national to me. Who said that? Elena Kagan, the second most liberal justice on the court. Oh, wow. That wow. was her. Mm. That was her. And so that's during the oral arguments on February 8th. And then, you know, the media wasn't paying attention that here were the people that already felt it was national and were on the record saying it's national and that that the states don't read the Constitution to make a decision on the state level. That's a federal document, the U.S. Constitution. So here we go. Let's count. You ready to count with me? Let's go. OK. Clarence Thomas. One. Says then. You've got the Trump trio, Amy Comey Barrett. Two. Says Neil Gorsuch. Three. Brett Kavanaugh. Four. And our friend, 
getting older, Clarence Thomas. Five. So that's 5-4 decision, ladies and gentlemen. This was 5-4 going down as far, as long ago as January 15th. So why is it big? It was big because Roberts went with the conservative majority on this, saying it's a federal thing. John Roberts. Six. And, and Sandra Sotomayor, who we just heard, of, heard didn't hear from, we heard of Elena Kagan. Sotomayor is very big on voters' rights. And so she's not going to line up on this because if you allow them to do it, she called it basically that you would have electoral mayhem, meaning states would say, you're off the ballot, you're off the ballot. Well, it only takes one election for the other side to have a majority, and then they take guys off the ballot. So Sotomayor was like, no, we can't do this. Seven. There's seven. Remember I said it was going to be seven, too? You're and I thought uh, Katanji, uh, Katanji Jackson. Jackson and I thought that um, San, uh, Elena Kagan would go the other way. But during arguments, Kagan was the one that just gave the quote here. So this was a very big deal to basically tell the states, you do not preside over federal things. Period. That's the way it went. Um, and that was huge. And the news media needs a civics lesson because they were all yesterday freaking out. Adam. <clears throat> Well, to all the Vinny haters out there that think Vinny can't count to nine, he just proved you wrong. He only got to seven. I didn't have but to. But something tells me he knows eight I, and nine. I could have I done it. I think you well, know you ten know, as well. He can't count well, to 21 unless he's naked. hey <laughs> hey Tom. Um, well, let's go over a few things. Colorado was the first state that introduced this uh, – into the atmosphere, and then I think it was followed by Maine and Illinois. Uh, but it, I think it's great to see that there's just a universal ruling uh, by the Supreme Court. Rob, I sent you something, by the way. Um, you know, you tend to think that nine O's are sort of anomalies. Like, oh my God, nine O's completely unanimous. Um, we the the five four um, rulings tend to get all the headlines. It's contentious. Who knows what's going on? Um, but here, keep scrolling down. Despite popular misconception, the most common rulings by the Supreme Court are, in fact, 9-0, meaning they tend to agree with each other universally more than disagree. Uh, the 5-4 gets contentious, Rovers, Wade, everything that gets polarized out there. But this is a very common ruling, and this is a very common sense ruling. Um, one of the key words that we always use around here is accountability. Another rule, another word that I think should be uh, vocalized is the concept of fairness and, you know, the right to a fair trial, the right to a, a fair jury, a fair judge. And this just seems fair universally. So I think, you know, last point uh, to my Democratic friends out there with Donald Trump, you know, you're accused of politicization of the justice system. You're accused of election interference. Here's my advice. Win the game during the game, a.k.a. election. Stop trying to win this thing in the pregame. Win or cheat, because um, I made, I took a little bit of time, I made a list of all of the left, all the Democrats made up, up-to-date, failed election interference tactics. This, this, this is a whole different game that they're playing. First, and I'm going to do this fast, Obama CIA spied on Trump and his Can campaign. Can I count now? One. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ready? Uh, Obama spied on Trump and his campaign. One. Okay, Hillary and the DNC, fake Russian collusion hoax. Two. They impeached him twice. Three. They indicted four. him four times. Five. Arrested him four times. 91 criminal charges. None of that worked. So then, Okay, then all these states tried to disqualify him from their ballots. That just failed, 9-0, okay? And now you have people like Colorado Democrats, Secretary of State Jenna Griswold. She goes, it will be up to the American voters to save our democracy. Remember I said that about a couple months ago? You're going to keep hearing that now that, that, that it's election year. And then Keith Olbermann, Pat, I don't know if you saw this guy. Rob, can you show up his tweet? He, you want to talk about Trump derangement syndrome? And I think yeah, he's, that there should be a home. The Adam, the list. They, there should be a, 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 a new practice that, like, for psychiatrists that just deal with Trump derangement syndrome we could have like a brief maybe value tainment could start what do you it. mean that's how i got cured buddy uh, well that, that's what i'm yeah. talking about so he's malfunctioning so bad look at this thing he goes the supreme court has betrayed democracy its members including jackson but well, he's turning on, on his own people and sotomayor have proved themselves inept this is the su supreme right. court to read in comprehension and collectively the court has shown itself to be corrupt mm -hmm. and illegitimate it must be dissolved he's calling for the dissolution hold on he wants to dissolve the Supreme Court. Okay, yeah. this is what he's talking about. Because they wouldn't do what he wants. Yeah, because he's a scumbag. And then Hillary Clinton, Rob, I sent you that clip of her on Instagram. 
I love it. Anytime something like this happens, they always have to go to the Hillary. Look at Hillary Clinton's uh, attitude on. Let me see if she says saving democracy. Without talking about the opinion, which I haven't had a chance to read and study. She might kill um, some people. There wasn't one. You yeah, yeah, this yeah. court would make that decision. Guys, I can't hear this. Can you go and back, please? Yeah. I'm not surprised that ultimately it's up about the opinion, which I haven't had a chance to read and study. Um, I'm not surprised <clears throat> that this court would make that decision. And I'm not surprised that ultimately it's up to the American people to prevent him from ever getting near the Oval Office again. And that's what we have to do. Meaning so, actual election. What, 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 are you ready for this? this? This is coming from the woman that started the entire fake Russian collusion that people still are talking about today. So here's my question, Tom. I want to ask you, too. Like, now what? The establishment is running out of options, okay? They either have to, you know, let the vote happen, which they'll probably do something with mail-in ballots or some weird thing, or they're going to have to, like, killing him, killing Trump is, it has to be on the table. And this is where I came up with this story I found yesterday, uh, Pat. This story came out yesterday on the same day that they ruled on this. The FBI, Rob, you have this one? The FBI in Miami has launched an urgent manhunt for Iranian secret agent Majid Destani Fatahani. I said that with the Persian slang. He's accused of plotting to assassinate Trump-era officials, including Mike Pompeo and the revenge killing for Iranian General Hussein Soleimani. Uh, so according to leaked U.S. intelligence, it is alleged that the terrorist leaders are seeking to revenge for the killing of Soleimani, and they have made life-threatening threats to Donald Trump, Mike Pompeo, and General Kenneth McKenzie. Maybe that's one of the reasons that they're leaving the border wide open because it's votes. OK, it's potentially bringing in these soldiers for cyber attacks. And let's just say let's just say this guy's mission is to go and knock out Trump. Anything. Listen, mm -hmm. anything is on the table with these people. I, I'll, I trust the government zero. And I know a lot of people out there like, oh, Vinny's this crazy. Conspiracy. No, 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 no. These people are here. It's out in the open and they're not even hiding anymore. Their goal is to get rid of this guy, because if you think about it, what do they want at the end of the day? Civil war, push us to civil war, have the military come in and take our guns, and it's game over. I um, think it's I think uh, it's really, really simple. I, I, when you look at guys like Keith Oberman, and not that we should be talking about him or, or giving him you know, any credit or anything here, it's which is a greater greatest threat to democracy, fair and open elections, or a guy that doesn't get his way and wants to dissolve one of the three branches <laughs> yeah, of government? That Who, guy, the where, latter, where, the latter. Where's the greater threat to democracy? Good Lord. But, but by the way, let, let's, let's kind of flip this real quick, okay? Let's say, actually, I'm trying to find a story here from a book that I want to read to you guys. I'm having a hard time finding it. Hopefully, I'll find it here in a second. Let's say this actually went the other way around. Let's say the left had control of Supreme Court 7 to 2. And let's say they actually did do that. What happens today? What happens to America today? What does Tuesday look like? If yesterday goes 7 to the other way around, he's off the ballot. You know what that means? Guess who's been sticking around the elections for all this time, not dropping out? Does her name start with Nikki? Of course it does. Oh, Guess okay. what she was hoping for? That this. to happen. Exactly. She was hoping mm -hmm. for this to happen because this was her way of being President Nikki Haley, wow. right? So very strategic on her end. Secondly, yesterday I had one of my favorite conversations of the year with Steve-O. Steve-O uh, from uh, 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 Jack 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 he came really? up here. He pulled up here with his RV. He had me on his podcast. Him and five of his friends and his dad it was the best camera. I'm telling you, one of my favorite conversations, maybe the podcast was two hours that we really? sat down talking. And at first I'm like, I don't even know what the hell we're going to be talking about. It was unfreaking believable the combo we had yesterday, right? And his dad, and you'll see this, is not very optimistic about what's going on with America. His dad used to be an executive. He was a former president of Pepsi in Brazil. Whoa. And uh, uh, Steve O's dad. His dad, his dad is a legit, legit guy. He's got a citizenship from three different countries, UK, US, and Canada. Mm -hmm. And we started talking about what direction America's going right now. And he says, look, this thing is done with. This is, this is in a place, there's nothing else you guys can do about it. You know, he was very negative about it. Wasn't very much optimistic about the whole thing that's going on here with America. We should get him a Future Looks Bright shirt. For Jesus me, guy. for me, I am convinced this run, again, I've been talking about this the last few weeks. This run started off with Obama's first term. They won. They injected Obamacare. Your taxes are not going to go up. You're not going to feel a thing. You know, you're not going to have a single penny. What happened to taxes overnight? Boom. Business owners felt If you want to keep your doctor, you keep your doctor. You keep right? your doctor. Yeah. It was Lies. all a lie. None of that stuff happened. 
Then uh, all of a sudden, racism started coming back up in America. Everybody started feeling like, oh, my God, America's racist, America's racist. So then second term, they got back-to-back wins. Then Trump messed it up for them, and he tried everything in his power to make sure Trump wouldn't win. All that stuff's not coming out, and Trump won. So then the series is two to one. The left is still up. Then Biden wins, very strategic, Twitter files. The only files we know is Twitter files. You know what files we don't know? We don't know YouTube files. We don't know Google files. We don't know Facebook files. We don't know any of the other files. The only files we know right now is Twitter files, right? The X files, whatever you want to call it, right? Those files exist. That's right. They do exist. So then uh, Biden wins. Now you have this. So today, the fact that the nine Supreme Court justices, especially the left, chose to go this route— That means they're choosing long-term thinking instead of short-term thinking. Kudos to them, okay? It's great that logically they were able to sit there, even though they can't stand a Trump. They cannot stand the fact that this guy is going to be the candidate. So then this leads to a story from Variety. Rob, do we have the Variety story here where they're kind of like, you know, so many great people have stepped away and they've been so noble to step away. Rob, Tom, do you know what story uh, we're talking about? Was it Variety, Tom? You and I were talking about it yesterday in podcast prep. Tom, I'm talking to you. Yeah, do you know I- what, Was it Variety or was it someone else? Was it... Uh, uh, Do you know what story I'm talking about or no? Okay. So remember when they said, why doesn't Trump just step away and no longer run? Was it Variety or was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, um, they were actually pointing it out at Biden. They said, there have been some great people that stepped away. Harry Truman stepped away. Lyndon Johnson stepped away. Who was that though? Do you remember whose story that was that said that? I don't know. Anyway, so... What's the point, uh, uh, guys? One of your ringers is on. So if you can turn off your ringer or lump someone's ringers on. So they, they now want him to step away. They want Biden to step away. They is desperately the want Trump to step away. Okay. They're like, look, why don't you guys go be noble like these other yeah. men that stepped away in the past? Yeah. So now they're indirectly begging <laughs> Trump, Trump to, leave. to step away. No. But here's a part. Here's a part that we're not thinking about. So in sales, when I was first coming up, one of my first sales uh, uh, trainers told me, he says, uh, don't give up on a sale until you have seven ways of contacting that client. So back in the days, what were the seven ways? It's a phone call. They're not picking up. It's a fax. They don't get back to you. It's a package you sent to their house. They don't get back to you. It's a, you know, uh, it's a drop them by the house. Hello? Door knocking, they're not opening the door. But you try seven different ways. Do you really think the establishment and the left is done just with this? Are you, no way. How many more different campaigns do you think they have the next nine months or seven months up their sleeve that they're going to be doing? Eight months up their sleeve that they're going to be doing? Multiple. Multiple. Of course. So, But this is a very big one because strategically they sat there and said, if we do this, it's done. Yeah. If we do this, this is the easiest way now we can do it, right? And if you look at Trump, one of the ways that he's playing, the reason why I have this book here, Power Versus Force, that I was trying to find a story in Power Versus Force. I posted this years ago, and I used to train out of this one page in the book. And the way it explains it, it says eventually when you're, when you're playing any game and you play it for so long, eventually you hit a certain level of, calibration in the way you're going about your business, that you're no longer trying. It becomes effortless. It's no longer like you're forcing things to happen. It's just happening. If you look at him right now, the way he's going about his business, he's just going about it without force. He's just dancing and and he's hitting a certain level of stride that he's pissing off the opponent without trying to piss them off. He's in court half the time. They're trying to throw him off half the time. And meanwhile, what keeps happening? His popularity keeps increasing. The people are more excited about fighting for him. And he's trying less. It's almost like in sports, they say, let the game come to you, right? Mm -hmm. Let the game come to you. Like Phil would tell uh, Kobe, slow down a little bit. Let the game come to you. Hmm. Hey, Michael, can you talk to Kobe about letting the game come to you? That one meeting that he had with Mike with Kobe? I think today Trump is allowing the game to come to him. Yeah. And by the way, let me tell you, that's a scary sight. When you let the game come to you 
and you're just like, like, you know, the first time you dance with a girl and you're, say you learn how to salsa dance because you took classes and you're, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're doing all this stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. And then you watch somebody, you go to whatever the club is in LA. What was that downtown club? Well, White Lotus. Uh, not White Lotus. It was and another that one that was uh, uh, Mayan. Mayan was like the place where if you've never been to Mayan, okay. it's a lot of great books to read in Mayan. But so <laughs> at Mayan, you would go and you would watch some of these guys. Just yeah. They would just do... And then they would do these things. You're like, dude, this guy freaking. He's floating. He's floating. <laughs> Trump is getting to the phase of floating. Mm -hmm. If he gets into that phase, you think Keith Oberman's pissed off right now? <sighs> dude, the guy's about to hit levels of frustration, agitation, anger that he's never hit before. I would pay if Keith Oberman, if you're watching this, brother, I got an income stream for you. I would pay if you had an OnlyFans account. I would pay for you to have a camera on your face when they announce every one of these victories <laughs> that happens. I just want to see your reaction, guy. You think you're pissed off right now? You think you're going to sleep at night having multiple drinks to try to kind of get this thing to go? Wait till you see what's going to happen to you the next three, six, nine months. Yes, the manipulation is not going to slow down. But if you were sponsored by any whiskey company, a tequila company, you're going to need all of it the next six, nine months if this keeps happening like this. So common sense prevails. Uh, even the people on the left who don't like this guy, certainly saying America is more important than my politics. And I respect any Democrat that is America first before political party. And what those people in Supreme Court showed, they showed it's America and the Constitution first before my political party, mm -hmm. and I salute you, and I respect you. I hope it stays that way. Especially Ketanji Brown-Jackson, who was appointed by Biden. Of course. Right? So well, it just shows that there's common sense going on. And have you Supreme seen the left's, the left's anger? By the way, because who are the three Democrats on there? It's the, it's the females. So they say that these people, Sotomayor, Kagan, and her, yeah. right? So is the left saying that these women are stupid and they can't do their job? That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. They're inept. So all those Democrats, all the leftists, you're, you're, you're anti-woman now? These are females that are actually following the law. But, th but here's my question, Tom. I want, I want to know genuinely, Pat. You mentioned all these tactics, and this is one of them that didn't stick, and they kind of knew about a month or two ago that even, Tom, you've been saying this numbers, the 5-4. Do you guys think, and I'm being genuine, is there something in place where they're even entertaining the option of trying to take him out, like actually assassinate him do you think uh, no, yeah, wait wait wait, wait. hold gonna, on no, adam, adam, i can't please. go there hold on um, adam you can't Ask say Tom. i know but both of you you can't just go eh, i don't know i'll say three letters jfk if they could they would don't even don't even lie to yourself i'm just saying do you think at all that conversation is being I, had I, at I all I, i'll take that i'll take okay that. i don't think uh you know the if they could would i think there's probably people that have fantasized about that Okay. No not, conversations. Not, no, no. Let's not. Let's not like uh, be naive and be like, well, there's no way in the yeah. world. That would, no. Okay. They're probably fantasize about that. Okay. And by the way, guess what? You have probably fantasized about. You probably fantasize some about some things yourself that you never did. Okay. You've done that. Mm -hmm. Everybody at this table has done. And when I say fantasy, I mean maybe your rage is so bad that you're sitting there saying, you know what, if I really had it my way, I would X, Y, Z. Yeah, so I think they've gone there, okay? Um, I also think it's the last resort. But the way, the way you do that, I don't want to say the word. Okay. The way you, you do, you know, what any of these, uh, attempts that they put on a Eliminate. president, yeah. you know how, how, you, how you do it? They're brilliant. They don't do it directly. They do it indirectly, okay? Now, if all of a sudden in the next three, six, nine months, they come up with a documentary or a show, and it's about Lee Harvey Oswald, and some call him a villain, some call him a hero. If they start writing articles like that, a 19-year-old kid whose father beat him his entire life Mom called him a piece of shit that he doesn't have a point to live and he's got so much anger and rage in him and he feels like this is an opportunity for him to step up and do something. 
they could wake up the next 200 Lee Harvey Oswalds to want to do something. That's the problem. That's the way they're going to do it. And all they're going to be hoping for is one of these guys to have the audacity to do it. The the, the, uh, the strategy of doing something as dark as that, it's, it's such a deceptive way that you can inspire that. You can actually do it in the most deceptive way possible, and they know how to do it. Do I think it's going to happen? I think it's less than 5%, but it is something that's on the list of things that could happen. By the way, as a general of the Army, as a lieutenant, as a leader, as a CEO of any organization, as a parent, if your girls say, I'm going on a weekend getaway with my five girlfriends and she's 16, you're a moron as a father if you don't think those other four or five girls, one of them can teach some bad habit to your daughter and put them in a situation to do something dumb. So if you don't sit there and process it, like I remember one time Tom and I had a conversation, he comes up to me and he says, hey, Pat, I just want to process something with you. And it's a trip that's coming up. Do you remember this conversation? It's like a trip that's coming up and, you know, they're going to Europe or they're going to this and they're going to this. What do you think about this, this, this and that? Because, you know, his daughter, should, he, should she go? Do you remember this conversation? Man, this was like, a, I want to say it was four years ago, maybe mm-hmm. three or four years ago. And guess what? That's what a great father does. A great father sits there and says, I'm a little bit skeptical, skeptical about this. Let me talk to my two or three friends I respect. Do you think I'm overthinking it? Do you think I should be worried about this a little bit? I'm like, well, you know, da 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 da. Bailey is this. Bailey is strong. You guys have raised her well. The other kids, do you know the families? Are they Christians? They are. are they, you kind of going through it. The, and then, you know what Tom is doing? Check. I thought about that as well. Check. I asked that question as well. Check. I asked that question. Check. And like, okay, we're on the same wavelength. Or there's an angle I hadn't quite processed. That's right. And, that's yeah. the, and I do that with you all the time. Like the other day, I asked you a private question about my personal life, and we're having a conversation together. I'm like, hey, what do you think about this, 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 and that? And we're processing it privately together, right? I think they've had those thoughts, they've had the conversations off the mic, and I think everything's on the table right now. And as the person who's a supporter of a, if you're somebody that's working security for Trump or you're on the inside camp, your level of paranoia and protection has to be at the highest it's ever been. Big time. It yeah. has to be at the highest level. You, you, you know, when you're doing public events, the coming in and checking in and doing all that stuff needs to be doubled down. The security, all that stuff needs to be doubled down. There can't be a single mistake done at any of these rallies at all. Okay. Uh, unfortunately for him, he likes to be in a public light. He, he doesn't, he's not, he's fearless. He, he's not afraid of going out there versus hiding in a closet or hiding in the basement or something like that. Weird. He wants to go out there and talk to the people because he actually likes people. Mm-hmm. He actually wants to go out there and do it. But, um, it, it, there's going to be many different tactics before that comes the next seven months. Well, <clears throat> do I think there's some fringe elements and extremists that would love to take out any major political candidate on the left and the right, though, Vinny? Uh, does, is Trump the most polarizing uh, character we've maybe ever seen in politics? Yes. Uh, there's a couple of things you cannot deny. One thing they have, they have 100% attempted to do is at least character assassination, but Teflon Don out here, you know, he's the only president or any political figure I've seen where you can grab him by the blank and his poll numbers goes up. I'll shoot someone on Fifth Avenue, poll numbers go up, gets a mugshot, poll numbers go up. So, you know, they've attempted the character assassination. I think at this point, everyone in America, everyone in the world knows who Donald Trump is. There's nobody that's like, who? Donald Trump? He's- the guy's by the border. Yeah. Vinny shows me a clip that he's by the border I on see. the same day Trump's on. Do you have that, Rob? He, he's at the border. Guys that are crossing the border are yeah. screaming, Trump! Trump. Did you understand what I just said? Guys he deported to you. No, no, the guys the that are no, yeah. trying to cross yeah, the Rob, border yeah. are screaming yeah. like, hey, I can't believe I'm seeing Trump he's here. He's the biggest celebrity yeah. in the world. There's no denying that. Um, yeah, Rob, I character said, like, assassination. Up, See if you can find that, Rob. Wait, hold on. Cause I want Keep going up, Rob. Up, up, up. It's before. Up, up, up. It's one more. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's above that right there. This is Trump at the border and people that are like Mexicans across the border or, you know, they could be Venezuelan, whatever. They're going Trump. They could be Chinese. Trump. They could be. Well, yeah, probably. <laughs> but listen, look, look at these Welcome guys. to all these newcomers coming yeah. to the country. Yeah, newcomers, my ass. Look at this. Listen to this. There's Governor look, look, in the wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> Those are... Trump! Trump! 
It's pretty wild. Illegals on the other side are, 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 are freaking starstruck because they're like, look well, let me Let me show you guys. <clears throat> so look, at the end of the day, this was very big. They're going to be celebrating. I think he had an event yesterday at Mar-a-Lago. And there should be something they should be celebrating. But more importantly, what we should be celebrating as a collective, mm -hmm. as Americans, is our current Supreme Court with this decision, they had an opportunity to cause a potential civil war. Exactly. And they chose long-term thinking in America over their political party. Respect. That's not easy to do. Yeah. Respect. You, you, got, you got to give them kudos. By the way, uh, Rob, can you go to Twitter, please? If you go to Twitter, I saw this data that Brandon, shout out to Brandon, always sends me some phenomenal stats, man. I freaking love that guy. Let's Brandon. go, Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, but this is, a, this is a different Brandon. So go to Lore, go to Lore, go to Lore. You're talking about the border, right? So I'll read this here while he's finding this. Okay. Hmm. Border officials see massive new surge at southern border. Okay, so what's, what's going on? You know, oh, it's slowing down. Nope. The numbers are back up. Okay. So U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, Sources reports a staggering search of 14,000 illegal immigrants at the southern border between Saturday and Friday with the Tucson, Arizona sector alone witnessing 2,000 apprehensions. As highlighted by Fox News, the search follows a pattern observed uh, since President Biden's inauguration with illegal borders. Okay, we already know all this other stuff, but I want to show you this. Go to that tweet, Rob. Go to that tweet if you could. So check this out. Strange trend at the southern border. Historically, 90% of apprehensions of undocumented immigrants at the southern border have been from Mexico. Historically, watch what's the first thing you said. Mexico. You said, look at that Mexican. Yeah, He's saying and Trump, and the, right? Yeah, 100%. You naturally thought Say Mexican. it's Mexico. The numbers from other countries have skyrocketed over the last couple of years. This should shock the hell out of you. Look at the numbers here, Rob. Pull, pull up a little bit. Can you Look at that number right there. Green is from Mexico. It's always since 99. Mm. Nearly 95%, 99% of all the apprehensions in 99, Mexicans, 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 Mexicans. And then go to 2011, still Mexicans. Then all of a sudden it starts flipping. In 2019 under Trump, that's when Trump came out with the new border and then everything changed and it dropped. But look at the last two years. This doesn't have the 2023 numbers. Look at the non-Mexicans from other countries. Wow. Look at the yellow. The yellow represents oh non-Mexicans crossing the border, apprehensions, apprehensions of undocumented immigrants. So the uh, question would be, who are these people? Where are they coming from? Do we have stats on what countries they've well, apprehended? If well, well, we, well, if you think about it, it's, it's China, it's, it's uh, African countries, and then, dude, there's a, a, uh, from Iran. Like the, the guy that they're looking for from the FBI, he's a freaking, he's an Iranian so terrorist. Let's go with some straight up, those are the high level brush strokes. Let's go to a couple uh, finer ones, Vinny, and go to some startling facts. So who did Castro send first? when he realized that the uh, Muriel boat lift was going to be allowed to, to 125 arrive. 125 political prisoners he released to Miami, and the unemployment the next year went to 51%. Political Correct. refugees. Correct. So once when Castro realized that Carter was making a political human right um, argument, and it gave Castro the opportunity. He emptied his prisons. That is an mm -hmm. absolute fact. We have record of it. Fact, ladies and gentlemen. Under what president, Tom? Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. That's right. That's right. AKA now Joe then, Biden. here's a fact. You have broad strokes, Vinny, and yeah. you're correct in those broad strokes, and the numbers what do you mean, are going to... you have broad strokes? Yeah, no, Tom. The, the, he was painting there are oh, Chinese oh, or this. He's right. Yeah, it's far right. more than Mexicans. So check this out. This week, Venezuela is refusing deportation flights from the U.S. where we have identified criminals. We've stuck them on planes. We're sending them back. And now Venezuela is refusing to accept them. Wait a minute. Why, why are they doing that? Wait, I thought I sent your ass out of here. You're supposed to be in the United States. Venezuela is refusing deportation by that we are sending back there where we have identified hardened criminals are like, wait a minute, dude. There's no way in wow. hell you should be here. Wow. Can you imagine even Venezuela, a communistic country mm -hmm. uh, with some of the worst inflation that's taking place there is, is saying, no, we're not welcoming these criminals. And, and by the here. way, they walked through what country to get to Texas, Mexico, and Mexico has found them committing crimes in Mexico. Who else is sending them back? Take a look at that headline. Mexico is sending them back to Venezuela saying, 
You're causing trouble in my country. Well, I'm just on a walk here going to the United States. I don't care. You're going back. And they're refusing that. Venezuela is refusing to take back its criminals that it is sending to the rest of the world. Thank you. Wow. Uh, sort of a different perspective here, but uh, along the same lines here, I think obviously what's going on at the border is a freaking disaster. And, and, and in my humble opinion, it, it's probably the number one reason that Biden is unelectable aside from his age and senality. Um, but... Forget you know, all during, that. Let's just look at this policies. <laughs> during COVID, we heard something quite often, and that was that we need to uh, stop the curve because the system is overwhelmed. They're overwhelming the system. There's too many people in the hospital. The hospital beds, the overwhelming system. Everyone has to basically be a part of this. Stop the curve. Let's all come together. Stop the curve. Flatten the curve. Flatten the curve. Yeah. Stop the curve. Everything with Flat that. Overwhelm the system. They've shocked the system. We heard... Uh, the, the, these terms over and over and over and over again. So, well, to my friends on the open border policy left, guys, this is exactly what's going on at the border right now. The system is being overwhelmed. It's being flooded and it's a freaking disaster. And, you know, I had a conversation with our friend, one of your top guys at PHP who came from, you know, one of these countries legally. And I asked him quite you know, bluntly, like what percent of these people do you think are genuinely uh, looking for asylum, but fleeing uh, turmoil and uh, gang warfare? Who, how many people are these criminals? He's like, bro, it's 50 50. You know, a lot of them are uh, escaping what's going on in El Salvador. We've seen what Bukele's done or a lot of other countries right there. And a lot of them are just straight up understanding that there's open border policy. China is a unique situation because I saw an expose and on a major outlet. He goes, why are the Chinese coming here? Uh, and I was like, all right, well, why are the Chinese coming here? Obviously the obvious answer is like, well, she's sending them in uh, to be a spy, which I'm sure there's some element of truth to that. But, you know, we talk about China a lot and the one child policy. Do you know that there's 40 million men in China who have zero prospects of ever getting laid. Uh, by the way, that's a very big stat you're given right Yeah. 40 million. Do, do, so, so, so I know you're going from the late part, but this is not about just getting no, laid. No, I'm not saying about, about ever I, getting a woman. No, no. I, so, so these are people that want to have families. Yes. That imagine, so, so just to kind of put it in perspective. Yes. Okay. It's like going to a club in Kentucky, Kentucky, and yeah. the club is called Pickle Factory. <laughs> yeah. And, and not as, as if I've never been to a club in Kentucky <laughs> called Pickle Factory. That's you so you know what it means? You know things are bad mm -hmm. that even on Thursday night, ladies' night, 90% of the people at the club are men. That's a club called China. Yes. Is what he's talking yes. about. Yes. Yeah. And that's exactly what's going on. So a lot of these people are basically fleeing the country because they have no prospects of, of getting a woman, starting a family, having children, anything like that. You know, as someone that worked in nightlife uh, in South Beach for many years, well, I own a bar in South Beach. Pickle Factory. The, 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 the Pickle right. Factory. Uh, Sausage guys, pick, Sausage Pickle Sausage Factory. Fat. We got uh, two for one drinks. Uh, Sex on the beach all you want. <laughs> but, you know, my number one rule, any nightlife uh, entrepreneur, anyone who's throwing parties, there's one type of party we are not interested in, and that is a sausage party. Yeah. That is no good. Even That's when we did bad. the party at the yeah. Soho House, I made every single person, including people who are part of Valuetainment, Vinny, Brady, I literally said, you cannot come unless you bring a female. I bought a trans, but at least he, Whatever. he identifies. Whatever, counts these days. Don't yeah. come. Exactly. <laughs> Don't come. We're going to come. Yeah. But it's exactly what's going on in China. Yeah. So there's, yeah. there's, there's some... Well, there's some Again. intricacies here of what's going on. Why is ultimately that, that the border is a mess. Everything that we talk about <laughs> somehow yes. goes to girls, nightclubs, you know, uh, uh, laid, like border. Yeah. Adam is the only guy I know that can turn every story uh, yeah. into you. Like, oh, it is you know, true. Adam's like, you know what? Nuclear war is coming. Let me tell you something right yeah. now. The missiles the penis, radiation is going to come into it, the. Yeah. the you know, yeah, the stem cells. Well, yeah, the name yesterday. of the bar that it's gonna That's hit right. is called Bottoms yeah. Up. Thank you, Pat. It's a game. Exactly. Yeah. By right. the way, you guys can check me out at Pickle Factory tonight. I'll be out there. Well, Bottoms up. Fantastic Bottoms club up. on Bottoms Thursday up. nights. Up. All right. So next story: <laughs> Kellogg's CEO tells Americans, "You ready for this? Yep. To eat cereal for dinner? Yes. To offset high cost of living? This article is written <laughs> by the great writers of Valuetainment. Okay. Mm. Who was it? It's a, uh, I, 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 Is it Rob, Shane Connor? It's oh, one of those. Shout out to Shane Connor. 
Kellogg CEO Gary Connor Pilnick steered up a bowl of controversy last week. Rob, can you pull up the commercial? Actually, go, go a little lower so we can show the commercial. Great word, yeah. by the way. A, so, a bowl of controversy. Steered up a bowl of controversy last week after offering struggling consumers some not so great advice for handling rising grocery prices. And in an interview with CM, you have to watch this interview, by the way. Pilnick suggested that having cereal for dinner, even the guy was shocked. <laughs> the guy's like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> And by the way, you know, according to the most recent data from U.S. Department of Agriculture, consumers spend on average 11.3% of their disposable personal income on food in 2022, uh, 2022, a level we have not seen since 1991. Watch this interview. And by the way, if you're watching this, please let me know if he convinced you that you should have cereal for dinner. Go ahead, Rob. The cereal category has always been quite affordable, and it tends to be a great destination when consumers are under pressure. So... Some of the things that we're doing is first messaging. We got to reach the consumer where they are. So we're advertising about cereal for dinner. If you think oh about the cost of cereal like, for a family versus what they might otherwise do, that's going to be much more affordable. I'm all for innovation and marketing, but the idea of having cereal for dinner, uh, <laughs> like, is I there the potential for that to land the wrong way? Uh, we don't think so. In fact, it's landing really well right now, Carl. When we look at all of our data, of course, we would know that breakfast cereal is the number one choice for in-home consumption. We understand that for breakfast. It turns out that over 25% of our consumption is outside the breakfast occasion. A lot of it's at dinner, and that, that occasion continues to grow, as well as the snacking occasion. But, but, by the way, pause um, it right here for me, and do me a favor. Okay, so I want you to go to the, uh, uh, make it smaller, Rob, and go to the actual commercials, like 15 seconds or something like that. Go, Lord. This is the commercial. Oh. Tell me, the marketing team that came up with this, mm -hmm. okay, tell me if this commercial actually inspires you. Maybe you're watching and saying, you know what, babe? Moving forward, we're going to have dinner, uh, uh, cereal for dinner. Watch this. Oh, look how happy the kids are. Go ahead, buddy. When I say cereal, you say dinner. Cereal. Dinner! dinner. Cereal. Dinner! Chicken! <laughs> Diabetes. You can uh, have the night off, chicken. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll go marinate. Cereal. Yeah. Cereal. Yeah. Yeah. Diabetes. Wow. Diabetes. Oh, exactly. Need, so, so, but by the way, <laughs> go ahead. Well, you know, as someone with four kids, Tom, two kids, uh, I'm sure the, the the number one thing you want before you put your kids to bed is tons of sugar <laughs> to just amp them up. Well, this is the equivalent. I, I think it's, it's ironic that uh, they were doing the whole chicken little dance out here. This is the Chick-fil-A messaging. This is the cows out there basically billboarding to eat more chicken. But millions are going to you know, millions of people are going to be like, you know what? If they're saying it, maybe we should do it. But Adam, going back to the hooking up, and imagine like having like a late night dinner with like a girl candlelight. You guys are going to that again. Baby, Go ahead, Tom. Baby. Tom. So, what do you think about this? Story? We almost went there, Pat. Um, I, I think this is horrifying. First of all, if you take a look at the side of a box of Frosted Flakes, the frosted part is a massive amount of sugar. There, there is hardly, you know, hardly a strong nutritional base in most of the super sugarified, you know, cereals that they have. Number one, and number two, you know, I, I think that. This this has got a tone of desperation from Kellogg's number one, but number two, I think it's I think people need to look at wh why would it resonate? Could it be that it's resonating with people that are really strapped? Could it be that it's resonating with people that they can't afford some fresh vegetables and chicken to make a, a, a nutritious you know, regular dinner? Could it be? You know, I, I, that that just really shocks it to me. And Carl Quintilla, who's the CNBC reporter there, and normally he lands very much on the the liberal side of things. Not crazy liberal, but definitely liberal. He, he even sits there surprised. Aren't you concerned this is going to land the wrong way? And what he's saying is it just landed the wrong way with me. And I, I I think this is this is so disappointing to me, and I and on so many levels I think about just the, the strapped American consumer turning to a box of frosted flakes for I, dinner. I just, but, but let me let me say yeah. this. Let me say this. Okay, guess what his job is? His job is to sell. Right. I'm not offended by that. Very simple. Your job is to convince us to eat a lot of cereal. Of okay, Warren Buffett. Guess how he would do his interviews? I drink eight Coca Colas a day. And we're like, wait, what? Yeah, I drink eight Coca-Colas a day. Uh, you know who's the biggest shareholder of Coca-Cola? Warren Buffett. Buffett. Oh, my God. I cannot believe it. So he's going to go, eight, eight Coca-Colas a day? Yes. He drank eight, whatever the number was that he would talk about. If a guy works, Howard Schultz, how many cups? Of, guess what he's supposed to say? Right. I drink six cups of coffee a day. 
The job of a person like that, his job is to sell you on using the product the most. Guess what? Then the job of the consumer is to either be sold or to question it. Okay? Very simple. Now, one can sit there and say, well, you know, when you're looking at this stuff, this is really not good for your kids. So here's what we did. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I, I, I don't know the exact date, but I would say 17 months ago, we uh, uh, brought a nutritionist to the house. And what we did is we said, go out at the entire, uh, what do you call it? The, the pantry. Uh, pantry. Not pa the pantry and the fridge. Yeah. Okay. A part of it is Alper. A part of it is the nutritionist. And Jen was reading this book. Uh, uh, believe it or not, you know who, which book it was? It was the book. But she was obsessed with Brady's book. And she was obsessed with uh, Liver King's book that he recommended. Mm. Not, not Liver King's book. He recommended a book on diet. So you know what's the first thing we cut a year and a half ago? Cereal. Do you know when's the last time kids had cereal? A year and a half ago. Wow. Do you know that? No cereal. No cereal for dinner. No cereal for breakfast. No cereal for lunch. Period. Now, the, the kids are conditioned on what to eat. You start off the day, if you're having breakfast, you, you like this, you like that, everything starts off with protein. You mm. first eat protein, then you eat other food. Lunch, you first eat protein, then you eat other food. Dinner, you first eat protein, then you eat other food. Gradually, if you can get your kids to start thinking about, you know when you see young kids and they're f fat and chubby, you know what parents will say? They'll say things like what? Well, he's got some uh, baby yeah, fat. No, he's yeah. just big bone. Yeah, he's just yeah. big bone. No, no, the diet probably sucks. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people... Ectomorph, mesomorph, you know, endomorph. We understand that there's different kind of bodies. I'm not sitting here saying there aren't people that are like that. But our job, your job as a parent is, to, and by the way, what's your favorite cereal? Because I can tell you what's my favorite cereal. Tom, what's your favorite all-time cereal? I haven't had it for two years, year and a half. What's your favorite cereal? Um, it was a long, long time ago. <clears throat> Honey Bunches of Oats. Oh, oh wow. wow. Had a good commercial, by the way. Yep. Honey Fit. bunches of oats. oats. That was a good one. What's yeah. yours? That's such a white guy. Vinny, I'm curious to know what yours yeah. is. What was <laughs> Fruity Pebbles. Really? With really cold milk. Wow. Shot Fruity Pebbles. I would hide it under the bed so my uh, brother wouldn't wow. find wow. it. Wow. Wait Adam, a what's Sorry, yours? You, you. you took Adam's choice. Uh, <laughs> bro. <laughs> uh, it says honey bunches uh, of white uh, guy. <laughs> uh, dude, it's not even close, bro. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Forget about Ooh, it. Okay. That's all, all right, sugar. Cool. Uh, uh, Rob, what's yours? Did you? Uh, Fruity Pebbles as well. Oh, yeah. really? So I you mean, and uh, Vinny. Hey, but I'm the gay one. Hey, By the way, girl. For yeah. me, Fruit Loops. For me, Cocoa Krispies. That's real. Let me tell you. Is that and, Count Chocula? And no, no, I can balls. have it. Oh, they're like little cookies. I, I, I no, would have been the, a great spokesperson for this guy. I would say, step aside. Let me be the CEO. We're going to sell so much freaking cereal, but unfortunately, it's not good for you. And they make so, a lot of yeah. noise. That was the whole thing. Yeah, right? that was yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Well, it, it, is the great, it is the job of a CEO, of, of the president of a company, to be a marketer. I mean, look. You're right. I, if you want to be fat, eat cereal and carbs all day long. Mm -hmm. If you want to get your stuff together, low-carb lifestyle, protein, vegetables, I, I, I abide by no sugar. This is why I only drink Vault 20 times a day. What I do is it's low sugar, it unlocks your brain, and it prepares you for the day. Anyway, this, um, this is all I have to say about that. But anyway, you guys should check out the Vault. Vault drink 20, yes. on Vault, Amazon. You have 20 yes. Vaults to unlock your brain? <clears throat> Wow. You, you know. Imagine if you didn't drink 20. But you know, there's a story out there. I'm trying to find it right now. I don't know if, Rob, you can pull it up. That uh, the, there was hunger and everything. I want to go uh, to the next story. Which, what story it, is this? Obesity is now a bigger problem than lack of hunger and lack of food. For sure. Do you know how many story. people are dealing with obesity right now? The number is a billion people. Yep. Okay. It's the number that just came out that talks about how many people are dealing with that. And, Rob, if you want to go to the Ozempic story, if you want to go to the Ozempic story, okay? Ozempic is coming for gyms. Here's how they're responding. And this is a CNN story. So you know the story is going to be. It has to be legit. Yeah, 100%. Okay, so let's go through it. So <laughs> here we go. Luxury gyms such as Lifetime and Equinox are strategically integrating weight loss clinics and specialized exercise programs for individuals prescribed with GLP-1 medication, Bahram Akradi. Uh, CEO of Lifetime, by the way, pretty uh, uh, stud of a guy. He, what he built with this concept Respect him for what he built. But let's see what they did with Ozempic here. CEO of Lifetime stated, we are confident that this uh, GLP-1 mega trend will be particularly positive for a lifetime. Equinox GLP-1 protocol pr uh, promises a targeted fitness program to retain 
and build muscle during the weight loss process. With projections estimating around 30 million people using GLP-1 drugs, by 2030, gyms are gearing up to tap into this market. Analysts suggest that gyms from Planet Fitness to high-end brands may witness an influx of new members drawn by the desire to counteract muscle loss associated with GLP-1 medication. Tom, how, how much are you following this Ozempic trend that's going on right now in America? Uh, I am, there. by the way, Eli Lilly, anybody who had bought Eli Lilly over the last year, Rob, mm-hmm. you can pull a stock chart if it's convenient. Um, this is this is what I'm following. Take a look at what happened to Eli Lilly over in the last year. Yeah. Um, it's it's crazy. I uh, think they're bigger than Pfizer, Moderna. Yeah, you always hear that. those things. They, Eli Lilly is humongous. They went from 300 a share to almost 800 a share in a single year. It was one of the, that and NVIDIA was huge. So I'm sitting there looking at the stock going up and, and I dove into it. And the weight loss drugs and everything, this is a phenomenon because America is a microwave culture. We want to put it in the microwave and get it back in a minute. So if we can say, wait a minute, taking walks and cardio is hard. You know, eating right is is expensive and it takes effort. You know what? If I could just take a pill to be thin, but wait, you're going to suffer from muscle loss. Now the gyms are trying to bring it around. And I think the gyms are also trying to be a little bit like a pharmacy, right? Hey, come lose weight and gain muscle. Well, people are more concerned about the losing weight uh, weight part. So basically you have a phenomena and you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for the side effects. There's a um, lot of serious ones down the because pipe. The big, yes. I'm waiting for the side effects to be common knowledge, not just uh, isolated um, headlines. Cause we saw what happened with all of the opioid drugs. Remember there was a bunch of drug companies, Pat, and the stocks went crazy. Oh, look at the opioids are saving cancer patients and, and, and people are have, you know, extreme injuries and, and the painkillers and everything. And then we're finding out people are addicted to Oxycontin. So that's what I think is happening here. Well, Ozempic, isn't that for type 2 diabetes? It's not even for weight loss, by the way. It's for diabetes. Right. So, 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 Rob, (laughs) can you pull up the story? Go type in in, uh, GLP-1 Ozempic. Just type that on Google, uh, Ozempic. There you go. And then go to the Harvard story, the second one right there, if you can click on that. Is that the one that's a side effect? Zoom in a little bit if you could. And then uh, this is a month ago. Go a little lower. Go lower, lower. Uh, yeah, go ahead and subscribe to that email very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom in. Zoom in. Right. Keep going lower, 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 lower. All right, here we go. That's right comedy there. people. So GLP-1 drugs, generic name, uh, semaglutide injection, Ozempic brand name, approved use, type 2 diabetes. That's what it's for, right? So now let's see what the side effects are on the bottom. This is from uh, Harvard's website. Go all the way down. Ozempic uh, faces the cause of electrolyte drugs. You may have uh, heard about this drug, misleading because of GLP-1. This can uh, be a side effect of GLP-1 drug or any other use. The rapid loss of fat in the face can cause a hollow, hollow look on the face, changes in the size of lips, cheeks, and chin, wrinkles to the face, sunken eyes, sagging jowls, jowls around the jaw and neck. Okay, go a little lower to see what it says. Other side effects of this is nausea can be managed by avoiding strong smells and eating crackers, mint or, okay, got it. Uh, vomiting can be managed by, <laughs> can be managed by well hydrated and having more frequent meals and smaller amounts. Dude. Diarrhea can be managed by drinking plenty of water. Constipation can be managed by getting enough fiber. Okay, so they're telling you those things are going to happen to you. To help avoid gastrointestinal side effects, Eat slowly and stop when full. Have smaller portions. Avoid being too active immediate after eating. Less common but more serious side effects. Pancreatitis, an inflammation of pancreas that causes abdominal pain. Gastroparesis, in which movement of food out of the stomach is slowed or stopped. Bowel obstruction, a blockage that keeps food from passing through the intestines. Jeez. That could be a problem. Uh, uh, gallstones attacks and bile duct blockage. Go a little lower. Read the first sentence there, right there. Most side effects of GLP on drugs are not serious. <laughs> no, no, should, that sounded serious. <laughs> you should immediately seek uh, yeah. medical attention if you have severe vomiting or diarrhea, <laughs> severe pain or tenderness in your belly, inability to pass gas. That's that's terrible for men. Oh my God. Or move. <laughs> That's okay bowels. for women, though. Yeah, exactly. Let's yeah. eliminate that from the there list. There jokes yellow at the poker skin, party. Gola lore. Gola lore. Oh, there's more? So, there you go. Yeah. I mean, so, look, it, it, this, this idea of, and look, <clears throat> I run a big enough of an insurance company that when I get the calls, 
It was like, let me tell you, this person's taking this, that person's taking this, this person's taking this, and what do you think about this? And what do you think about And I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of getting caught up in this kind of stuff. By the way, who was the person you had that they, they were making fun of Ozempics and uh, stop being jealous because Ke- you can't Kelly, afford it? Kelly Osborne, as you guys remember, she was, you know, Ozzy Osborne's daughter. First of all, can you do me one favor? Rob, show her mother. You know all those side effects that you Lord, talked that's about? That's her now? Show her mother. This is the mother. I send it to Rob. Look at the mother's face. That is Sharon Osborne. That's Sharon Osborne. Yeah. Can you do a close-up on her face, Rob? Everything that you just described, her neck, her face, she does I mean, not she's look. She's also 75 no, you know, years no, but old. By the way, if she had meat on her bones, if she just stayed healthy. But then this is Kelly Osborne talking about people hate on people that are on Ozempic because they can't afford it. Play this clip. I think it's amazing, and I think it's great for them. There are a million ways to lose weight. Why not do it through something that isn't as boring as working out? <laughs> people hate on it because they want to do it. Right. And the people who hate it on the most I gotta say are the people who are that. secretly doing it or pissed off that they can't afford it. Oh, so, by the way, oh, you don't at all sound like an elitist. Not, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Ah. Mush, mush. And guys, let's, ah. not, let's not forget who Kelly, uh, who she is. She's the same person that when Trump was talking about the, the border, the immigration policy, do you remember what she said about toilets? Rob, can you play what she said here? Guys, this is the same person. Every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? <laughs> oh, that's not. In the sense that, no. you know what I mean? Like, what I'm saying that <laughs> there's, more, there's more jobs to be. In L.A., they, they always, but, but, but they Latinos don't, are not only people. No, I'm loving. They're eating no, their own. That, is that Rosie like Perez? That. Rosie okay. Perez. I'm not. She's so stupid, baby. She, but by the way, this is the same out of touch, elitist, yeah. rich yeah. person. That's like oh, one of my favorite movies. She's based, Jeopardy champion. She's the best. Yeah. What is what a is a queen? What the queen? <laughs> that is that thought with Q. But uh, but this is the most out of touch. Can you imagine the saying this in front of a camera with a mic? Mm-hmm. That the people that can't or don't aren't taking Ozempic is because they hate on me because they can't afford it. What a yeah. out of touch, spoiled, elitist loser. Yeah, loser. Way, I think I think we're. By the way, the this, same... uh, this clip has uh, been, has been brought to you by Ozempic, yeah. our sponsor. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Rob, oh, can we go to the commercial real quick? Yeah, yeah. did you? And by the way, you, 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 you listen all that stuff that's negative. How, you know, what nobody's saying, hey. Eat healthy. You don't have to deal with any of those side effects or anything like how about this? Don't eat cereal at 8 p.m. How about that? Mm-hmm. How about just be smart about your diet? This is just a little quick fix. Or any of the other 23 hours. Oh yeah, exactly. Just like what 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 you, happened to you, you? You think that's gonna work? You think like this, you know, going to the gym, you know, selling people on exercising is gonna be more attractive than a quick fix like this? Uh, Do you know how no. easy of a product this is to sell today? Yep. Yep. And by the way, this is, Pat's right. This is for, originally was for diabetes. Yeah. And now you've got multiple, and I'm not going to name this website, but there are multiple websites that are online pharmacies. You know, fill out the form. Doctor will contact you. Step one, fill out the form. Step, step two, doctor will contact you. Step three, get your meds. Weight loss made easy. Get access to Ozempic, Wegovy, we and other weight loss medications. There's nothing in this particular site, and there are many like it. It's one shot a week. People are losing weight with GOP-1. Why can't you? An easy once a week shot. You hear what Pat just said? Yeah. You no, know, it's go easy. to the gym yeah, it's and do e- all that, or it's yeah, but, an easy once a week. But I mean, you're not, way, but this you're, is a diabetes medication that there is not a word on this particular website, you, and there are many of these online pharmacies mm-hmm. that are talking about it. That's why I say set your calendar, ladies and gentlemen. I believe there's going to be a a side effect fallout, and we're going to be back in court with these billion dollar settlements, just like we are for um, many other drugs that that just. A wash through the populace as an easy one-step microwave solution, just like all those opioids. Yeah, the, the most interesting thing, the most compelling, she said, what did she say, is who wants to work out? It's so boring. Yeah. You could just take one of these pills and be skinny. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you guys something. Listen, you fat bastards. Uh, there's, there's, if it was easy, everyone would do it. You know, we learned during COVID that the people that actually were healthy, that worked out, that exercised, that did cardio, that got sunlight, that actually went to the gym were perfectly fine. We saw that video with RFK bench pressing 300 pounds and then whatever that doctor's name was, who looked sloppy as all sloppiness. That was the vaccine advocate. It was like. Take your pick here, guy. Oh. Just don't work out. Do not take care of yourself. This this guy. What's his this name? sloppy guy. 
<laughs> okay. What is? Yeah, that guy looks healthy. Yeah, and those yeah. are great pictures of the guy. That's Peter Holtes. Right, Peter Holtes. Holtes. So there's a difference between being preventative and reactive. It's always better to be preventative and it, do it the hard way. Yeah. So it, it's the equivalent, n- not going to the gym, not working out, it, and to a Ozempic is the equivalent of trying to get rich quick. You talked about microwave hustle society, 100% get rich quick. We already know where that ends. Sam Bankman freed, Bernie Madoff. We already understand the situation. That's why it's better to build wealth slow. If you work out every day, three days a week, for years and years and years and years, you'll just always stay in shape. It's not an overnight thing. There's no overnight success. So okay. if, if you think this quick pill is, is, is your answer, look at all those side effects. Let's go to this next story. Next story, Panera Bread and California Circuses. This is a Wall Street Journal story with that title, by the way. Panera Bread and California Circuses. California's new $20 fast food minimum wage set to take effect in April raised eyebrows due to its uh, peculiar exemption of bakeries. Allegedly benefiting Panera Bread, Governor Newsom's ties to Greg Flynn, a Panera franchise owner and campaign donor, have sparked controversy. Controversy. Flynn donated $100,000 to Newsom in 2021 and $65,000 for his re-election, despite claims of innocence from both Newsom and Flynn. The involvement of political donors in crafting legislation remains suspicious. The Service Employment uh, International Union, SEIU, opposed broad exemptions but a, a, accepted a limited one for bakeries existed before September 15, 2023. Flint denies requesting this exemption and claims to have been surprised by its inclusion in a final legislation. Oh, surprise. Mm. That's so great. By the way, do you know what this means? Minimum wage for restaurants, companies, fast food joints, I believe it's with 100 employees or more. If you have 100 employees or more, the minimum wage is officially 20 bucks an hour, Vinny. How are they going to make their money then? Oh, they're going to make their money. You know how they're going to make their money? Charge the customers That's all they're going to do. Whatever the food was is just more expensive. Yeah. So if before the minimum wage was 10 bucks or 15 bucks, now you're going to make it 20 bucks. Five dollars on 15 dollars is what? 33%. If if something you were going to order steak or chicken at Cheesecake Factory, whatever kind of a food you're going to order from them. Bill was going to be fifty dollars. The bill is officially sixty-five dollars. Yeah. That's what they're going to be doing. Okay, and and meanwhile, more and more people will be leaving California. But this Panera Bread guy that's giving money to Newsom is now sitting there, can pay, pay people whatever they want, n- n- not the twenty dollars, probably the fifteen dollars m- money, and still save that third on the cost. Tom, what's your reaction when you hear a story like this? Well, I, I I'm not surprised. Um by what Nikki Haley's doing here, because she got money from Boeing, and so she gave Boeing some sweet deal. Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, I'm wait, sorry. wait, wait, I'm sorry. Wrong I'm sorry. story, I'm sorry. Tom. Wrong. Uh, this is Newsom and Flynn. I, I'm terribly sorry. Yeah. Well, I'm it's not surprised with what Newsom is doing here. Uh, they gave him money to his campaign, and so now he's returning the favor. This is scra- This is why big donors give, ladies and gentlemen. They do it because they want favors. They want something for their industry or something's going to help them. I'm not surprised. Surprised here? I'm surprised we don't see more stories like it exposing this grit graft to the light of day. By the way, guess what the job of a guy like him is? So in here, let, let's let's go through who is the most responsible for this right here, from the highest to the least. Is it the billionaire? You know, the millionaire, the guy that's giving him money. Is it him or is it Newsom? 100% Newsom, by the way. That's his job. I'm t- if I'm that guy, dude, I'm doing the exact same thing, just like the Kellogg cereal guy. We already know Gavin Newsom's price, if this is actually what happened. And the number is exactly $164,000.80, apparently, because that's how much he gave him, right? So that's if this is what happened, uh, Gavin Newsom has a price. Is anybody surprised by that? Why are you excluding bakeries? What's the deal with that? Right. So what's the deal? So uh, it just further proves as we go slippery, slippery slope here, minimum wage is just an absolute scam. So all ideas start out in a a, a good way. You know, the Industrial Revolution, the starting labor unions. All right. We, you know, the uh, workers rights, better conditions. I get it. But now it's just they're revealing their hand. Like the what was the one congresswoman in California that we talked about calling for a $50 minimum wage? Yeah. 
It's oh, insane. The, lady, the lady in Oakland, yeah. It's insane, oh, and it's just going to go up and up and up and up. And it, so there's two there's two ways to have more money in your life, right? You can either make more or spend less. And there's two ways to basically combat minimum wage. You could charge the customer more or option B, the Joe Biden approach, it's shrinkflation. You go to get a sandwich, which is usually 12 inches. Here's your seven inch sandwich, Vinny. Yeah, so luck. you're paying the same price for it. Yeah, that's the lady right there. It's just all ludicrous. Well, this so, Pat was tell- asking whose fault it was. And the answer is this businessman did not break any laws. No. The rules of the game is that you are free to donate to people. Hey, I'd love to see you win this election. I think we need more of this and less of that. I really, this legislation would help us. You know, please remember me uh, and remember the plight of my industry because this would help my industry. Here's $100,000. That's legal. That's the way this works. So I think it's the broken system that is at fault. Because this entrepreneur, this business owner, did what's legal and inbounds. And, Tom, was Citizens it, United in, in 2010, whatever it was, was that only for federal elections or was that for I, state I, elections as well? I'm, I'm not familiar with the, with the waterfall effect on it, but Citizens United basically gave you know, corporations unlimited ceilings on donations. Right. And I think for you and I, um, Rob, you could look this up, I think for each person, presidential primary and presidential election i think you and i are capped out at about like a citizen at like five grand or something like that Mm -hmm. for candidate and and by the way just so you guys know this greg flynn guy the way it sounds like it's like yeah he just owns a couple franchises greg flynn is the biggest franchise owner of restaurants (laughs) worldwide oh gotcha (laughs) so so just so you know this is not some small time guy rob can you go up to this and just kind of see who it is type in uh greg flynn uh, uh, net worth. Just type in Greg Flynn net worth and then go to the story of a, the first one right there. Seven franchise billionaires you should know. That's from a year ago. Okay, zoom in. First one is who? Zoom in. Greg, Greg Flynn. Flynn. There we go. Greg right Flynn there. is a founder and CEO, the largest franchise operator in the world, Flynn Restaurant Group and Flynn Properties. He started his franchising journey in 1999 when he purchased Applebee's franchise. Over the years, he has grown to multi unit franchisee Brad Flynn. Restaurant group into a wildly successful operation. The brand owns and operates approximately 2,400 Applebee's, wow. Taco Bell's, Arby's, Wendy's, wow. Pizza Hut's, and Panera, generating roughly $4 billion in sales. In 2012, Flynn became the first American franchisee to reach the billion-dollar mark as an enterprise. The Flynn Restaurant Group is worth an estimated $2 billion. Well, Pat, let me ask you this. I want you to turn on your uh, 1.8 GPA math hat right quick. So... Anytime you're making these types of political donations, the calculation is what's the ROI? Tell me what the ROI would be for $164,000 versus $2 billion in sales. Well, then do this. How much does that benefit the company? Flynn Restaurant Group. How many restaurants do they have in California? Flynn Restaurant Group. Restaurants owned in California. So if we go Flint Restaurant Groups owned in California, um, six brands. So if you see how many they own in California, all you have to do is, okay, they're in 42 states. 2,400 restaurants. Well, how many, in, how many states in California? And employ 7,300 people. 73,000 73, people. 73,000 people. So how many employees does this group have? Maybe we need to ask the question. I don't question know. Rob punched in a little bit. I can Flynn see. Restaurant Group. Employees in employees in California. There you go. Let's see how many they got. Because the number has to be a reasonable number. Uh, including some reason. How many there are thirty thousand of the employees? It's giving the breakdown of how many what their demos are. But all you have to do is if these guys got seventy three thousand employees worldwide, mm-hmm. you have to assume California is probably one of their biggest ones. Okay. okay. Now, let's just say in California, they have, I don't know, let's say it's 10,000 employees. Pick the 10,000 employees. Of the 10,000 employees, let's say 20% of them are minimum wage employees, okay? So let's take 20%, which is what? Probably more than that, but I'm I'm, with you. I'm just giving a number here. Let's just say 20%. uh, Yeah, I I agree. But let's let's say 25%. Sure. 25% of 10,000 employees is 2,500 employees. 2,500 employees times... 
five times 40 times 52, it's a $26 million savings. Yeah. That's wow. what it is. So do you think it was worth that 160 no, Pat just did. Yeah, it took exactly. $5 yeah. off yeah. their wage and, and backed into it. Right. It's a $26 million savings, which means, and by the way, that's at 10000 in mm-hmm. California, of which 25% are getting paid minimum wage. If it's 20000 50%, the number could be easily $100 million. Hmm. So they're saving tens of millions of dollars. Right. So this is why we say, well, why would someone yeah. donate to a political a party or a candidate? And, you know, this is a wild amount of money. But, you know, scratch my back and I'll... You know, if, funny thing about if, my back, Vinny, <laughs> but my uh, for $164,000, whatever for it is, sale, if, it's, if the vote is for sale, which it is in the state of California, you get opportunity. And by the way, this is not just California. He just happens to be one of the best ones yeah. in the country to do it. So let's go through this next one here. A very uh, uh, historical win for Nikki Haley in District of Columbia. We have to give a praise because this is a big deal. And the reason why this is a big deal, because her campaign strategies, if uh, she has, uh, uh, I'm sure she's got a few of them. They're probably sitting there thinking some ideas on next moves. Nikki Haley wins the District of Columbia Republican primary and gets her first 2024 uh, victory. AP News. Mm-hmm. She, uh, 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 in terms of Donald Trump's swing, her spokesperson emphasized it's not surprising that Republicans closest to D.C. dysfunctions are rejecting Donald Trump and all his chaos. Really? That's yeah. what you said. Let me read it one more time what the, yeah. the, the spokesperson said. It's not surprising that Republicans closest to Washington dysfunction are rejecting Donald Trump and all of his chaos. This could have easily been written. It's not surprising that the establishment in D.C. who have destroyed the city, which our capital is in, is supporting Nikki Haley. Okay. Haley clinches all 19 delegates in D.C. primary, marking a significant win despite the district's heavily Democratic leanings. With only about 23,000 registered Republicans, Trump's campaign responded sarcastically congratulating her queen of the swamp. <laughs> despite previous yeah. losses, Haley <laughs> vows to continue honest. challenging Trump, aiming to provide voters with an alternative. Her rally in D.C. reflects her strategy of engaging with diverse Republican voters, including moderates. She emphasized her ability to deny Biden a second term, contrasting herself with Trump's electability. You know what this victory is, folks? It's very simple. She can actually win as a Democrat. That's what this means. D.C., are you kidding me? How many cities do we have in America as left as D.C.? Do you know when D.C. started having a uh, mayor? Rob, can you go pull up to see the first time D.C. had a mayor? I think it's 1974. First D.C. mayor. I did an episode on this. What year is Maybe 19, what is it? Uh, uh, so the, the, and as the first mayor of DC was in 75. Okay. So first time they had a DC mayor was in 1975. Who was it? Do you know, since 1975 till today, how many Republican mayors DC's has? Zero. Zero. What? It's always been democratic. Do you know what city has the biggest disparity between the biggest population of top earners making $200,000 plus and the biggest people making the least amount of money. I'm going to go with D.C., Pat. Do you know who has the top crime in America for robbery? I mean, you go through it. Any, any, who do you think is number one? D.C. The people who have the worst policies to run a city in America just voted for Nikki Haley. Good job, guys. Congratulations, honey. And by the way, you're officially a leading candidate for the Democratic Party, which you should be very proud of. So campaign strategy, it's time. You may want to consider flipping the party because Supreme Court, your dream that you thought it was going to happen, it's not going to be happening. It's time to start talking to the establishment left on how much money they would back you up if you ran as a Democrat. That's actually the most formidable strategy for Nikki Haley. Wow. Because if you think about it, too, because Nikki Haley, she would replace, what, Kamala Harris? So a woman of color replacing a woman of color. And then we'll have uh, Gavin Newscom as the president of the United mm-hmm. States. That's that's a nice little tactic, too. Uh, you know what? You better be careful with that because— what, what? It might be real? No, from a political strategy standpoint, if you take a look at their ability to sway the voters, oh. that would be a very strong ticket. It would be. It oh, would my God. Gavin Newscom? So. Oh, yeah. but DC man, what a what a what history a, they had! It was that what was that mayor? Marion Barry. Barry. Marion Barry. Yeah, Barry. I was going with this. Well, he was complete he was criminal. In, he was in, yeah, complete <laughs> criminal. Yeah. He ran on the platform. I will get the drugs off the street and into my nose. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's basically it was, you have my vote, Mr. And he, Barry. And he all he also had a he had all the affairs, and they were talking about education, and they joked they called him the beducation candidate. You know, yeah. it was a uh, it was crazy, and and actually. 
when he got out of jail, you know what the people did? Huh? They elected him again. Oh, you see? Oh, they love him. They yeah. love him. It's uh, it is Washington D.C. city politics is a is a a horrible blot of history. Yeah, it's the anyway. swamp, man. Uh, it's famously the swamp. The so, queen but, of the swamp. But if that's all you can win, I what does that. that say? You're an establishment candidate. You know, just just make it legitimate. Stop denying it. Just make it legitimate. Uh, I don't. I, I'm sure I'll get some pushback on this. Oh, well, we'll push. Uh, I just think she's a, an establishment Republican candidate in the same elk as Jeb Bush. And the whole cast of characters that Trump chopped down one by one by one by one by one. Uh, nothing in her career leads me to believe that she's a Democrat. Do I think she's part of the uniparty establishment? Yes. Swamp? Yes. You know, she even uh, she was on Kristen Welker on uh, MSNBC Meet the Press. And she point blank asked her, like, are you going to run as a third party? Would you run? As she goes, I'm a Republican. You know, you might not. I might not agree with all the Republicans. She's just not MAGA. She's looking for her lane. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, if Trump doesn't win in 2024, Vinny, hold your breath. I don't want you to get upset I'm, here. I'm totally fine. I'm She's, calm. And I don't, and I think Trump, I think he's winning uh, in the general electorate right now, 48, 43 national polls. She might end up being proven right because she's running around saying that he's unelectable in a general election. Now, she's completely unelectable in a Republican primary, no doubt. Yeah, that was the interview right there. But we'll see who gets the last laugh. She was the first woman. I'm not campaigning for her whatsoever. I think she's very uh, elitist, as Pat likes to say. But she was the first woman ever uh, to win a GOP primary. Uh, obviously was in D.C., swamp creature. But she's just, I think she's calculated and she's just waiting for Trump for something to happen and waiting in the balance. There, the, the, there's zero uh, people in the Democratic Party in the DNC that is doing anything. With well, you just woman. nailed it, though. After this election, after this year, she's yeah. like what Republican would ever even look at her? And she is, you know, she's an operative. She's not. She's obviously she made her money because she mm -hmm. wants war and her husband owns defense contracting firms. And, and she she went from one hundred thousand dollars to a, a multimillionaire. We know what the hell she's doing. She's obviously working with the Democratic Party. Party. For all of them to praise her the way she's doing and for her to win in Washington, she's mm -hmm. done. After this year, she is done with whatever they're trying to do. Well, Why wouldn't she go? I, I, she should I, just come I, out and be like, I'm a I Democrat. I kind of disagree with you on this one. Number one, I think she's done in the short term, meaning today's Super Tuesday, right? Yeah. So 16 states are going to be voting today. Uh, I think by the end of the day, Trump is going to be the clear nominee. Yeah. We'll see what happens with these uh, criminal cases out there. But I'm look, I'm just playing devil's advocate right here in 2028, if Trump is not the president, she's going to do the old, I told you so spiel, and we'll see what happens to the party. What do you mean, what do you mean we, in 2028? Meaning if, if, Trump, if something Trump, whoever Trump. wins this election, assuming that it's Trump, sure she's going to have egg on her face and she'll never be a candidate again. But if Biden wins somehow... Uh, oh, if, if the, Biden yes. wins this year in twenty this year in twenty twenty four, oh, she will resurface in twenty twenty eight. I don't, and I don't say, disagree. I told you so. No, I don't. I, not not. Yeah. She will not resurface in twenty twenty eight. She will resurface on that. Oh, Tuesday. correct, correct. And correct. she'll be like, I told you so. Yes. Don't say I didn't say yes, this to you. Yeah, that's you're my right. Point. But but what I'm saying is, from the standpoint of, you know, uh, again, Vivek. In the fact that he only had seven, eight percent, we would go to the debates, you'd watch him, you'd clearly say, this guy was the winner. And then nothing, nothing would move on the numbers for him the next day. Why? Because if Trump wasn't running, I think Vivek would have been at 40, 50 percent ahead of everybody because MAGA would have gone with Vivek over DeSantis, over Tim Scott over Nikki Haley, over any of these other guys that are on the state, they would have gone to... I agree Vivek. with you with the exception of DeSantis. I think if Trump wasn't in the race, I think DeSantis I don't had disagree. the name Say recognition. They split had, I don't yeah. disagree. Let's split it. And so name recognition, for sure, he had already experienced with a state, but Vivek would have been the Trump model. And then we would have asked, is America ready to have somebody that's not a Christian or Catholic to be a president? Mm -hmm. That's a debate. Is America comfortable with a guy that's maybe too brown for America. Him and I, we have same skin tone. Or he goes, oh, it's just, it's not, we're not ready for it. Those are the types of conversations that America would have to say. Mm -hmm. What's the point here? In the future, if she runs, she's permanently lost MAGA. Correct. That's not going to change. I, I don't think DeSantis permanently lost MAGA. I think DeSantis 
is different than her. I, th I just think DeSantis yes. is not marketable. That's the only thing. Right. I think she's marketable way more than DeSantis. Think about the key word, yes. marketable, yes. more marketable. She stands up on stage. She's a very good debater. She's got fire. She can, she can do all that stuff. She's talented, right? But, you know, people don't trust her. Exactly. You know, they don't trust. At least you sit there and you're like, okay, you know, DeSantis, this guy's not marketable. Maybe his campaign manager sucked. Maybe his campaign team sucked. Maybe they're not the best at timing and all this other stuff. But guess what? You at least sit there and say, I, I, I trust this guy. I don't think this guy's a bad guy. Mm -hmm. I think her, her election chances of winning, she would be needing to flip to go if she wants to be president. That's it's going to be that, very hard for her to be because, president That's what I'm saying, because he nailed it. Think about this. Uh, right now, the MAGA base is how much of the Republican Party the voting bloc? How, if you had, how much percentage? Let me just look at what Trump's well, approval well, ratings are saying. in the base. So what I'm saying is you're saying more, you think if he doesn't win— that base is going to turn no, to vote. No, I, I don't. I'm oh. just saying she's going to have a point. But he's saying, I told you yeah, but, so. Yeah, but I don't think a point's going to make people change their minds about but, all this bullshit that she's doing. There's no way. I don't disagree. I don't think they like but, but, her. But, so answer me this, though. Yeah. If she flips at him and she goes, guys, you know what? I'm tired of these people. Look at the Trump. All you mad. I'm going Democrat. They'll, they're all already welcoming her with open. They'd love her. A little flip, flipperoo, they'd vote for her. Think about it. I think independents would. I don't think any. The Democrats. I don't no, think the I, progressive I, I disagree side with that. of the. I think they would love. They're, her. They're she already have war. their darlings on the left. Okay, they've got the Kamalas and the AOCs no, Ka and Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, Ka Kamala Nikki Haley is not on the left. The independents. I, 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 look at how she did in New Hampshire. She did great in New Hampshire. She didn't do well in South Carolina, and then she's not doing well in. You know, MAGA type state. We'll see how story. she does today. Go to the next story. Okay. Video shows Mansion ready to throw down with a climate protester, but security got there first. By the way, <laughs> all you have to do is rap. Play this clip. Because <laughs> once you see this, a, a guy gets in his face. Joe Mansion is sitting there doing his thing, and then all of a sudden calls him. I, I, I'll just let you see it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Rob. Joe Manchin. You've sold our futures and you've gotten rich doing it. You sick fuck. Oh, wow. How dare you? You sold our... Whoa. I'm not going to sit down. You've received more funding than any other senator. You've made millions. You've made millions out of your position. You drive a Maserati. Kelly Pipe wine goes right through West Virginia, which are your constituents. These people came here. support this pipeline? The pipeline they should support because it has energy going to... Back to our future. 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 Back to our not your problem. These are climate protesters. Yeah. Yep. We'll, 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 we'll get back on track here, guys. Back our futures, not your profits. Protect our futures. Not your profits. Protect our futures. Not your profits. Protect our futures. Protect our futures. Not your profits. That guy stole some. That guy just stole a bagel. You see that? Climate. That guy just stole. What's the last part? The most important part of the clip. Either that or he stole. What is? Look, look. The guy just stole a bagel. He stole something. Look, that's like. Oh, cornbread. Yeah, He's probably the cornbread. Jewish guy, right, Rob? Bro, oh, yeah. bagel. The freaking guy. By so what, what, do you, what do you think about this? Adam, this is your guy. What yeah. do you think about this? Pat, when we first started talking about politics <laughs> in 2019, 2020. This guy's been said, your guy for years. This has been my but guy. Tell me, what's your why, biggest takeaway from this? Why is this my this? guy? Because I, I believe in, in, in a synergist. So if you can continually get elected as a Democrat in the reddest state in the union, you're probably doing something right. When you think of West Virginia, you're not exactly thinking of progressive values. But the guy has done it over and over and over again. And these climate activists, you know, they famously say, fuck around and find out. Well, they showed up and homeboy <laughs> found out how he rolls. But can I add one more point about who these people are? Um, the... The, these um, these guys, everyone feels tough. You know, Drake famously has said that trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. Everyone acts tough online, but in real life, they, you know, are soft. We saw the guy on the plane with Mike Tyson um, step into the lion's den, got his head knocked off. But a lot of these people, these climate activists, I was so curious, like, how they got here. Like, why is this their number one cause? And obviously the Greta Thunbergs and everything like that. But here's what I kind of found out, and I'll try to make this very quick. Uh, the foundation of this is Marxism. So uh, Marx, Marxism, the foundation of Marxism are, are class struggles, right? The bourgeoisie versus the proletariat, the capitalist versus the working class. But when communism failed in the 90s, when the wall came down like that, all the Marxists, Marxists were like, all right, what the hell do we do now? What's on the agenda right there? And they shifted their energy towards 
climate change and environmental activism. So the cla- basically what they found out that the class conflict didn't really work. The workers didn't really want to have a bloody revolution with the capitalists and the and the people who own the means of production. All they wanted was kind of higher wages and better working conditions. So it turns out they didn't want to have this uh, revolution. So then what happened was the new class struggle didn't go from economic um, uh, what's the word? E- economic struggle. It went to class struggle is what happened. And um, what what ended up happening to that is that uh, the it was the advent of the what we're finding out now, the oppressor and the oppressed, Press. the intersectionality and the haves right and have there, nots. the haves yeah. and the have nots. And this is where internet intersectionality came from and this resistance and all this kind of stuff like that. So, you know, what they said, what Marx said in, uh, in the Communist Manifesto was, um, you know, bloodshed. You're going to need a revolution. And the, the thing with Marxism is that bloodshed is a feature of Marxism. It's not a bug, as Tom would like to say. So the progressives, the Marxists, the collectivists, the commies, the social democrats, they are in p- a part of the environmentalist wing, the AOCs out there, the Green New Deal. And then obviously we know the oppressor is just straight up the straight, White men versus everybody else. So that's who these people are uh, at their core. Is that they're Marxists? I agree. And I look. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, go ahead. It's and you know what? There's there's not. They don't offer solutions. They offer chance for TV, mm-hmm. chance for video footage. Um, you would see the Greenpeace folks in these rubber boats that were crossing in front of uh, Chinese whaling ships that are out there in, you know, open international water. And, you know, they're fishing for whales and they cut the whale up and it becomes all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, food products and stuff and more for for Japan. And yet they're out there in their little rubber boats, you know, save the whales, cutting in front of whales. And every now and then a whaling ship would run over one of those little rubber boats. Yeah. And then they say, oh, oh my gosh, the loss of life. What do you mean loss of life? You hopped in a rubber boat on high seas with waves and you challenged a giant ship <laughs> that was out there hunting whales. It's And so your chance and all your little things for TV and everything, mm-hmm. you know, that's where it goes. What they don't want is facts. What they don't want is facts, that if you turn everybody in green cars, and by the way, how many automakers over the last week have said, hey, you know, the uh, full uh, EV by 2030, we can't do it. Did you see how many of those automakers came out and said that? Hey, auto, you know, Mercedes said it. General Motors said it. General Motors had previously announced that Cadillac was going to be only EV. What they seem to forget is how the hell do you make the energy? And we have... Coal is cleaner than it's ever been. Is it the cleanest energy? No, but it's cleaner than it's ever been. They don't, but they don't want that. They don't want facts. They don't want truth. They want their chance for TV because if it gets solved, they're unemployed. Mm -hmm. By the way, what's going to happen to a national security guy that pushed a protester? What's going to happen to him? He's going to get a medal of honor in my book. Uh, No, no. What are you talking about? There's people from that were just there on January 20, uh, January 6th are going to be going to jail for God knows how many years. What's going to happen with that guy? I don't think it's because he pushed the guy out of the no, way. No, no, you no. It, w- it wasn't just a push. I mean, he he didn't pose a threat. If something but something would have happened to that guy, his head would have hit the door. Oh, something would have happened. That guy would have been in trouble. But, but right now, you know, right now, I don't think anything's well, going to happen because you know what he could say. Watch, look, he's saying he he feels threatened. At that point, right there, he could say that yeah. Manchin feels threatened. And by the way, I don't even know, I don't know if that's a security or that's just somebody that works at the thing. But that's a that's a push. Let yeah, me tell you something. He if, if, if something happens to that guy, but nothing happened to the guy having gay sex on the Senate floor videotaping it, then we've got bigger problems than well, I remember, thought. By the way, let me tell you what, what news just came in right now. Breaking news. You ready? Uh-oh. Facebook is down on Super Tuesday. Okay. A lot of people are logged out. I just went on my Facebook right now, and I'm logged out. So is Rob. Can you guys check to see if you've been logged out oh, from Facebook? your Facebook? Just go on your phone, Tom. I'm, see if your uh, Facebook, I'm logged out. You're logged out. See if, see if it says session, session expired. expired. Oh, wow. They don't want nobody on Super Tuesday talking about what's happening. Well, no, it's not. I'm, I'm, we're not. I'm just saying the timing, Rob, Whoa. said it's a very. Yeah, yeah. me too. Are you, by the way, for people that are watching, are you also logged out? Can you just go check your Facebook? And if you're but, logged out, put here, put here if you're logged out. Yeah, check Instagram as well. Oh, yeah, wouldn't even um, let me log in with my password. 
Oh, I couldn't refresh the feed on Instagram. I'm, on Instagram, I'm right I there with you. The feed. Feed. I'm like, everybody now. seeing this just like this? Instagram is so, also. So you're, yeah. Instagram so, is so also you're saying down. the timing isn't isn't really weird well, right all now? All I'm saying, it's a little weird. But let's Dude, see what's going on here. Facebook weird. and Instagram down during outage. Thousands affected. Well, five people here are affected. So uh, <laughs> if you were just kicked out of Facebook weird. or Instagram while scrolling, you're not alone. Meta social platform are currently not working. With yeah. both Instagram oh. and Facebook pulling up uh, failure to load error pages, go a little lower. Come on. And uh, down to tech reported 44,000 outages at 1013. It's 1048 right now. So it was 30 minutes ago. Eight on your side uh, has reached out to Meta. What? What is the eight on your side? Oh, the show has reached out. So go on Twitter. Go on Twitter <laughs> and let's see what Twitter is saying. Like, isn't it, isn't it a coincidence, though, that this is happening on this day? Well, I watched your interview with Eric Prince from Blackwater right after the day of the AT&T outage. Oh, and weird. you asked, what are the chances that China was responsible for that? Despite AT&T and the cell phone service saying that was their bad. Look. He said, what was the number he said, Pat? 70%? 70%. He said China's I don't know, bad. dude. Uh, these things are popping up more and more. And well, but, but, number but, one trending hashtag on Twitter right now is Facebook down. And Adam, I, I understand that angle, but what yeah. about just them going, hey, let's just not let anybody speak or share or do anything on a major platform? I don't, I don't, I don't, I, if this anything. was a general election, your theories would hold water. But this is well, a primary, a, a meaning, theory. meaning a, those people are voting for Trump. It's well, happening. No, but That's not is, like, oh, my God, Nikki Haley won all 16 states. That would be a problem. No, but what I'm saying is the primaries, not, are, Trump's got locked it's up. It's not a theory. I'm, so I'm saying. Just, I'm just letting it, you know. Hey, hold on. General election, Trump, Biden, I'm, not, I'm with you. I'm saying, I'm saying yes. it's not a theory. I'm just saying, is it a weird coincidence that on Super Tuesday, which you brought up, I didn't even know it was Super Tuesday, the day after the scholars, thing, this has happened. This is, it's weird. Isn't it a little weird? I, I, yes, it Okay, is. that's all I, I'm I'll saying. I'll give you that. It's very weird. And it's happening in I'll here. I'll give you that. Pat, so, based on the, your conversation you just had last week with Blackwater, Eric Prince, how, how do you process in this, man? No, I mean, look, you just, uh, from, the, from the standpoint of staying paranoid, only the paranoid survive. Yep. Uh, at the beginning of this podcast, when we were talking about, you know, could there be an attempt? Could they do this? Could they do that? Could they do this? All the stuff that we talked about. What it really comes down to is we said, hey, the next eight months are going to be crazier than you think. Yeah. Period. There's going to be crazier. There's going to be a lot of weird things going on. And when things happen, just guess what? Just be a little bit, uh, you know, aware of it. Uh, I don't know what the reasoning behind this is. I'm not going to jump to a conclusion. All mm -hmm. I'm saying is it's a weird day for this to happen. And, you know, you ought to also be thinking about Zuck doesn't want this. No. You know why Zuck doesn't want this? He, Zuck doesn't want everybody going on Twitter saying Facebook and Instagram is down. You think Zuck wants to give market share to Twitter? At all. You no. think Zuck wants to give market share to any other, other picture platforms or real platforms like TikTok? He doesn't want to do that. This doesn't help. You know, go to Facebook stock right now. Let's see what Facebook stock is doing. Is it doing anything? Probably doing nothing to it. But I'm just curious if you see Facebook stock today. Okay. No, it is doing something. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's well, down. Not a lot. It's down 2% today. Um, I hope it plummets and I'm just going to buy some more Facebook stock. Just like Bitcoin. Bitcoin just said record breaking <laughs> right now while we're doing yeah, podcasts. Yeah, Mike hit me up. Mike yeah, Bitcoin me just said record breaking high while we're doing a podcast. So, um, very interesting. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what's going to happen with this story. Yeah, I agree with the, you, Pat. The, the, this, the Zuck does not want this. Zuck this is does not, good not for want their, this. So it's not like uh, yes. if it, it's anybody doing it, it could be an outside enemy like a China cyber yes. attack, Correct. Russia cyber attack, Iran cyber attack, somebody like Correct. that, a bad actor could be doing that. Let's talk about inflation. You know, this whole thing with inflation that everybody was telling us is, is bad, but it's not that bad. Remember when they were saying it's actually 18%. And the White House would correct it and says, no, it's not 18%. It's actually this. It's actually that. Well, Market Watch, there's a story titled, True Inflation May Have Peaked in Late 2022 at 18% and still hovers around 8%. A study led by Marjean Bolhuiz from the International Money Fund and Harvard University researchers J uh, Judd Kramer, Carl Oscar Schultz, and Lawrence Summers challenges the notion that consumers' pessimism is irrational, arguing that true inflation, if measured accurately, would justify consumer gloominess. The study titled, The Cost of Money is Part of the Cost of Living, highlights the discrepancy between consumer sentiment and consumer price index CBI, CPI, pointing out that the CPI fails to fully incorporate rising borrowing costs, including interest rates on credit cards, car loans, and mortgages. Hmm. By accounting for increased borrowing costs, the researchers 
estimate that the true inflation would have peaked at 18% in November of 2022 and still hovers at around 8% contracts and sharp with CPI report reported figures. Tom. So let's talk about inflation real quick. When our government measures inflation, they measure it and they leave things out of the full customer, full consumer experience. So Pat, what if I did this? I'm going to determine the average height of everyone in your household. Okay. Okay. But, but I'm going to leave out everyone under the age of 12. So between you and Jen, the average ha- height of someone in your household is about six foot. And you say, well, that's not right. Online, Pat is five six. So no, no, no. You see where I'm going here? But yeah. they say, well, well, we don't count kids in this study. We don't count kids. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the way the government measures inflation. And what Lawrence Summers, by the way, Larry frickin' Summers is Lawrence Summers, mm. and this was done by Harvard University, a liberal think tank, pointing out this. And he was the former. President of Harvard, I believe. Correct. Also, he was a chairman of the Fed, or he was a secretary of uh, Treasury. And longtime mentor to Sheryl Sandberg, Mm -hmm. um, who credits him with a lot in her career and her development. So here's what they did. Interesting. They went out there and they looked. They say, hey, when the price of something goes up, that affects the consumer. What about the price of money? Doesn't isn't the price of money also inflation? So if mm-hmm. interest rates go up, that's the price of money. So it's not just at the car. And and let's look at things people need and buy, like a house, a mortgage, or a car. So it's not just that the car was twenty percent more expensive. Remember chip shortage, Vinny? Yeah. And cars are expensive. That's I inflation get. on the price of the car. But what if there's also inflation? on the interest you pay on the car. So they're pointing out correctly, hey guys, inflation was freaking crazy. It was 18%, it's still 8%, and the big line of the story is, hey, you know what? Uh, Consumer pessimism is not irrational. It's very rational. Consumers are feeling pinched and they're upset. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a... Research done by Harvard University, and they're right. Inflation on money should be counted also in inflation, and not just because people get up credit cards, and that's one thing. People doing something like, oh, buying a house or buying a car, very reasonable yeah. things, the inflation on the price it's, of money. It's, it's like it's, the, the weird thing with this is the whole thing that's going on right now, Tom, is the following. When the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and middle class gets smaller, okay? The rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and middle class gets smaller. Rob, can you type in middle class, history of middle class population in the U.S., declining, something like that. You will see what's happened to the middle class of U.S. over the years. If you just find a chart, if you can, uh, okay, check the, look at that right there. Shares of adults in U.S. middle class has decreased considerably since 1971. 1971, the upper income, 14%. Now it's 21%. Lower income was 20 Five percent. Now it's twenty nine percent. Look at middle income. We used to have sixty one percent of America was in a middle income category, doing okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now it's fifty percent. What does this mean? So we go to dinner, okay? And these dumb policies, when they make money cheaper, it makes the rich richer. So three people go to dinner together: the low income, the middle income, the upper income. And all of a sudden, the guy with the upper income is saying, yeah, let's get two dozen oysters. Where is it from? Australia? <laughs> awesome. Can we have some foie gras and let's get some bone marrow and let's get some of that steak you got from Australia that's only drinks beer every day and listens to Mozart and gets massages every day. <laughs> it's all good. And you want to bring some of that, Kobe? Bring it. Perfect. Let's go ahead and have that as well. Thank you. Do you have any sea urchin? We'll take that as well. Awesome. So so the upper income guy's like, oh, dude, I can't wait to freaking have this food. This is delish. The middle income guy's like, dude, I hope he, he, he's ordering for himself. I'm not sharing all this stuff. The lower income guy. <laughs> Suicidal. No, no. You know what the lower income guy is saying? Ah, yeah, he's going to pay for it because he's a rich guy. I'm not oh, paying yeah. for it. So, so, but there's certain people that are going to feel this. You can claim inflation isn't what it is today. And then you can go to stores and see how people are behaving and how people are living. Guess what? It's happening. But you know why it's not being felt? Because the stock market, Dow Jones, is doing good. Because mm-hmm. Bitcoin is doing good. Because of why? Because freaking 
the top 1% and the upper income population is getting bigger and the poor is getting poor and middle class is getting destroyed based on what? The more money we print, the more we put it into the economy. The historically, we've always known low income families don't know how to save. Middle class doesn't know how to save. The people at the top, they save and they invest. They keep uh, uh, taking advantage of something called compound interest. And then all of a sudden, one day we're waking up saying, holy shit, what's going on here with middle class? So to me, uh, uh, when, when all these guys get, are getting on stage and trying to convince you that the economy is doing great, uh, how's the uh, lifestyle going for you? How's it taking care of your wife and kids, your family, your bills, your rent, your food, when you go shopping, all of that stuff. If you're personally feeling it, then that's exactly what's taking place. If you're like, no, I'm not feeling it. I'm actually, life is actually very good today. Inflation is actually low. Things are actually very cheap. Egg, bacon, everything I'm buying, milk, everything is cheaper than ever before then maybe they're right. They're telling the true story. But you cannot fake what the average voter raising their kids is experiencing. That part you can't lie. And this right here, middle class going to 61 to 50, this is byproduct of terrible policies that benefited the guys who are the, the, the people who are sitting there saying, hey, politicians, can I buy you for $164,000? Mm -hmm. We run a $4 billion restaurant uh, franchising, biggest one in the world. Hey, yes, I'm for sale for $164,800. Fantastic. Thank you for making us, saving us $30 million bucks. Appreciate you. You're awesome. That's what's happening. That's the reality when it comes down to this. By the way, somebody just messaged right now saying, Pat, we love this podcast. What happens? Facebook is down. Instagram is down. But what do we do if YouTube is down? Well, here's what I suggest you do. Text the word podcast to 310-340-1132. Once again, text the word podcast to 310-340-1132 as an insurance policy. Because if something does happen, we're still going to continue. We just don't know what we're going to continue when there's outages. I'm not talking about that we're going to be off of YouTube. We actually like this platform. We think it's great. We like the technology. We like how it works. We can also find us on Spotify and Apple and a lot of different places. But just in case something happens during the during next seven, eight months and weird things happen, uh, as an insurance policy, text the word podcast to 310 340 1132. That text community is also the first to find out when we have guests come into our live podcast and they typically sell out quickly because they buy it first before anybody else buys it. Now, let's get to the next story here. Next story I want to go to is teen now faces charges after pushing friend off 60 foot Washington Bridge. I saw this video and I want to share it with you. And parents, I want to get your thoughts on this. Okay. We all have kids. And we all have kids that do dumb things, okay? And Rob, can you can you pull up the video that's the story, not this one. You have the clip. I don't know if I sent you the whole story. If I did not, maybe I'll send it to you if you don't have it. But I'll read this story to you real quick. Taylor Smith, 18 years old, has been charged with reckless endangerment after video of her shoving 16-year-old Jordan Holgerson from the bridge over the Lewis River at Molten Falls Regional Park near Vancouver on August 7th that went viral, okay? The Clark County Prosecuting Attorney's Office says Smith's actions created a substantial risk of death or serious physical injury. If convicted, the charge against her, Smith, could face up to 364 days in jail and pay a fine of $5,000. She, uh, she admitted to pushing her off the brim. It's not like she admitted. It's on the video. <laughs> it's on the camera, whether you yeah. do or not, we have the video to show for it. And she, uh, she wanted to jump and she was scared and she asked me to give her, she asked me to give her a push and I didn't think about the consequences. Horrifying video shows what happens to her. So Rob, if you don't have it, I think I have, uh, well, I can't give it to you because on Instagram and it's down. There is, uh, uh, go ahead and play the clip. There's a link on YouTube, I want to say. Yeah, there's a full, but well, go ahead and play the clip first and then I'll find the other clip. Go ahead and, go ahead and play this clip. Well, she's saying no. Ready? Oh, oh shit, dude, baby. bro, bro. Oh, that's By the way, that's yeah. 60 feet. You know what's 60 feet? Your ribs, everything's... That's your... six stories. Jeez. And she's going and, flat. And she's falling with her stomach because she pushed her shoulders. Oh, and if you hear the thud at the end, that was a oh, belly yeah. flop. That's bro. where you see that she bruised. Oh, I've seen this. But this isn't ribs. recent, is it? No, the this video's is, older. This is from 2018, right? Yeah, but the, she just got three. Well, how long? Yeah, how, what happened now? What'd she get? Five yeah. broken ribs and trachea. No, three hundred sixty-four days in jail. You, you've seen this. This was this is this is nothing yeah. new. But now it's finally happened. So, 
Yes. For when oh. you see a story like this, and, and by the way, Rob, can you do me a favor and just show this clip? I found this. If you go on YouTube and type in girl pushes friend off bridge and then go to the uh, uh, Inside Edition one. Go type in girl pushes friend. Go to Inside Edition one, which is a fourth one down right there. That one right there. Click on that and let's see what happens. Go to and, uh, go ahead and play this. Who shoved her friend off a 60 foot high bridge will spend as much time in jail as her friend spent in the hospital. Attorneys thought Good. they'd worked out a plea deal to keep the young woman out of jail. But the judge had another idea. Punishment for the teen who pushed her friend off a bridge. 19-year-old mm. Taylor Smith was in tears as she was escorted away in handcuffs after being sentenced to two days in jail. What? That's it? The ruling surprised both sides. Taylor had pled guilty to reckless endangerment, and prosecutors recommended no jail time. But the judge refused to go along. Jordan, I'm going to push you. No. This is the moment Taylor pushed Jordan Holgerson off the bridge in Washington State last August. Ready? Oh. Six broken Jordan ribs. Oh. 60 feet into the water. She's lucky she didn't kill the girl. No, man. no question about it. But, but here's so the question. Lucky. Okay, so here's the question, Tom. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Gives me chills. So in a situation like this, when you see this, now obviously as a parent, you're furious with the kid that's pushing, right? What the hell does it matter with you, right? But, you know, when you're in moments like this, we've all been kids and you're kind of like daring. I dare you. 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 And everybody's act. We all, we've all done some stupid things as kids. Tom, what should happen here when you see a story like this? Obviously, you see what the judge did. But what should happen here to the kid that pushed the, her friend? Well, stupid has consequences. And, you know, how many times in life have we, we, I see a collective we, people have injured somebody and that they all want to say, I didn't mean to. I was just. Right. That is a cheap excuse. And it's always an excuse. Your actions have consequences. And when you're impulsive and then you hurt somebody, the consequences is that you th that person got injured and you're responsible for it. And so, you know, first of all, all these kids are up there jumping from the bridge and things like this. You know, high jumps like this, you know, everybody that's done it. You've know, I've jumped for bridge like that. I jumped from the Boca Raton Inlet when I was a kid. I told you about that Inlet Bridge. You jump feet first you always jump feet first and so the person pushing is going to know that and she pushes her she goes into a belly flop uh, position and gets really hurt and so your actions have consequences and so uh, if i was the judge i probably would have given her a little more i maybe would have given her a week to go think well, about she it she may get 365 tom four years later because it's been now four years so what this story is talking about is the fact that you know, uh, uh, anyways, we'll, we'll see what's going to end up happening. I saw this video, this story. I'm like, that's pretty crazy. What do you think should happen? What, what would you what would you want as as the father of the girl that was pushed? Because you made a really good point. I was going to go a little bit more, but come to think of it, their friends are messing. I, do you think that she thought she was going to break ribs? And no, not exactly. at all. Exactly. That's no, what I'm saying. So I don't want to I don't want to ruin her life. But what would you do mm -hmm. if you what would you want if you were the father? No, you have to. You have to. Like, listen, I have kids and my kids have done stuff where I get called to go to school. We've been in meetings where I'm like, guys, I got to go. Something happened. I'll be back. And you go to school and they tell you what your kid did. And you're like, freaking guy, what's the matter with you? I'm like, yeah, this guy should get punished for this. I told you, yeah, you're suspended for a day. You're, and, and they're only 10 and 12. They've already had moments of suspension, which is you know pretty impressive for these guys to experience some of these things early on. But you, you have to do it as a form of learning a lesson early. There has to be a, 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 a element of fear. The other day, I showed a video. Rob, I want to show you this video. Oh, man, I can't show you the video because Instagram is still freaking down. There's this video of a car in Germany, Autobahn, he's driving, I believe it's a Porsche, okay? And you know how fast he's going? He's going 190 miles an hour, wow. okay? And uh, 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 let me see, a German Autobahn crash, I think it's the Audi R6. I think it's the Audi R6. And by the way, when you see this crash... 190 miles an hour? But, but you have to see how this happens. That's the one right there, Rob. If you can play this, check this out. Look at this video here. Watch this. Oh, yeah, just just turn the off music. the music. Just turn, there you go. What, that's oh, real. Geez. What? It, yeah. It watch it again. Pole. Just watch it again. Watch it again. Oh, oh my! Oh. That looks fake. That looks fake. I know it does, but it's oh. real. Is watch he dead? It. I mean, how did he? Okay. Oh. Well, you can pause it right there. By the way, how did it go up like so. That? So the truck is coming to the left, and he doesn't Hit see the it. wheels. So. Oh. Wow. The car is trying to yeah, go to point two five. Nice, Rob. Nice. So the car, the truck doesn't see, goes to the hits him. 
See the tires on the truck? Go round and, and round. Then, oh, oh, my so God. To the pole. They, they said, they said when this happened, instant death, the guy who died didn't feel it. The body was missing in half. They couldn't find the other parts uh-huh. of the body they're looking for. Oh but let me tell you what happened. I showed this clip to my kid, to my boys, okay? And I swear you should have seen Dil- Dylan's reaction. What do you do? Dylan goes, oh, my God, that, that is so scary. Yeah. And I said, yeah, really, tell me about it. He says, Chris and I were planning on racing when we turned 16 years <gasps> old. See, what? he's telling me this. He says, one of his friends. And I said, really? He says, I, I, that, that's, I can't do that. That's, so it all of a sudden did what to him? Scared there's, him. There's an element. Fear in there. Yeah, I mean, listen, responsible yeah. driving like his father is very necessary <laughs> right. for you to realize that. So, so what's, what's the point here? <laughs> the, point, the point here we're talking about with things like this, uh, uh, an example being made early on, you, you're not really punishing her. You're really putting the fear in the other kids to know, hey, mm-hmm. if you guys do this, this could happen to you as well. It's not just for the kid that got the punishment. It's for everybody else. And I love the fact that that video got 30 million views. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because potentially, out of the 30 million people that watched it, say a, uh, a, a, an eighth of them are kids, okay, that watched it. Five million of them that watched it. They're like, dude, I'm not pushing my friend. And say, say maybe you saved 400 cases worldwide of somebody not doing some stupid like that. That's plenty because you probably saved that video, probably saved 10 people's lives worldwide, if not more. Easy money. Great. Yeah, easy. Awesome. Fantastic. Great to hear that. It's, you forget the level of influence. I'm at Casa D'Angelo. Uh, uh, a few days ago. You know, we don't go there often, but when we do no. go there... First we, time, yeah? Yeah, for, Casa de, yeah it's yeah. a nice restaurant. We're at Casa D'Angelo. One of the one of my insurance partners, who uh, also were part of the same company, and we sold to the same company. He's there, he's in town, and I go sit there, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? Jennifer and the kids are on the other side, so let me go say hi to him. I said, how's everything? Oh, she's pregnant, 18 weeks. Oh, congratulations. This guy's a guy that's in his, he's a very good looking guy and his age doesn't start with four and five, okay? And he's very good looking. And his wife's age doesn't start with six or five or four. And she's very attractive. I like this guy already. And, and he's sitting there and saying, I said, so how many kids do you have? He says, I have one, the guy. I said, how old is he? 30 years old. In business with you? Yes. <laughs> awesome. I said, Okay. So what happened? Why are you doing this now? He says, you know what's crazy? I said, what's that? He's probably, listen, I don't want to say the name because you know, I don't want to uh, uh, do anything with his business, but he knows who he is. He'll probably text me. I said, I have so much, uh, uh, you know, he says, when you were talking about the wrong people are having too many kids and the right people are not having enough kids, you have no idea how that hit me. Mm-hmm. That gave this talk at that one event in Dallas. You know which one I'm talking about, Tom? Where I was on stage saying, hey, why are you guys having one or two kids? Let's go, guys. We got to get to the four, five, six, seven, eight. I was eight. there with my cowboy hat. Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. So, so anyways, so he sits there and he says, I came back and I thought about it. I changed my entire lifestyle on what I had to do. I won't get into details. But he says, built a house where I want to have five kids the next few years, okay? And we're going to be going for four or five kids. Wow. Couple of them themselves couple of them surrogate type of situation that they want to do because they want to have more kids. Because he sat there and he says, a person like me that has money, has resources, has a business, has found a way to win in America. Why am I only doing this with only one kid? I'm making a mistake. Respect. I'm going to have more. You know what I love about that story? That means the right messages are affecting people and resonating with people to say, this made me think, you know what? I should be doing this as well. I'm thinking about it. To a part of social media, there's the negative side of it. There's also the positive side of it. There's so many good things that happen when somebody sees a video like this to put the fear in you to not do stupid. Mm-hmm. These types of things parents should share with their kids and say, hey, honey, look at this. What do you think about this? Oh, my God, that's what happened to him. He pushed. I'm not going to do that. Do you want to go to jail? I'm not going to go to jail. These are the types of videos you should share with your kids. For your kids to realize that there are consequences to bad decisions in life, like Tom said, consequences for making stupid decisions. What's the one thing you always say? More is caught than taught. In parenting. 
Uh, well, exactly. This is. Uh, yeah. I learned that from a man named Rich 25 years ago, yeah. 23 years ago. Well, whoever this gentleman is, yeah. sounds like uh, not Rich, the guy that you ran into at Costa D'Angelo. I'd like to meet this man. Uh, yeah, sounds, I'm sure he's. Sounds like, like he'd be a good influence on someone like me. Okay, so check this out. Cyber attack, Rob. What do you uh, What are you seeing here on Twitter? Are you saying they're talking about uh, this could have been a cyber attack? Okay, Facebook is down. Instagram is down. Facebook Messenger is down. AT and T had a hit. YouTube had a hit, apparently. Uh, T-Mobile had a hit. Threats had a hit. Google Pay had a hit. Uh, oh, shit. So all of these guys today, Rob? Oculus, WhatsApp. hi -ho! Okay, this is officially... we're still streaming on YouTube right now? We are still streaming. By the way, this is officially nothing to do with Facebook. Look at TikTok. Go to TikTok and see if TikTok's having this challenge. I'm going on TikTok right oh, now. Oh, weird. Uh, TikTok outages reached in the last 24 hours. Oh, shit. So... Rob, can you go to WhatsApp? Because WhatsApp's in the meta tech platform now. <clears throat> What's up? Hey, ho, hey, ho. <clears throat> wow. Guys. Yeah. Okay. So. TikTok's working. Huh. No, it's, look, it's out. It was out, well, out, outages on WhatsApp. TikTok is working. This is very strange, guys. Hmm. Go a little lower. Who else? We have Verizon. Who else was a Spectrum? Not Infinity. Pokemon. Honeywell. Okay. They That's had to go after TikTok to make it look good. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't trust Microsoft anything. took a hit. <clears throat> Inet, Reddit, go a little lower. Crickets, OpenAI, slight. Mm -hmm. DoorDash, no. <laughs> FirstNet, Cox, no. Spotify took a slight hit. Amazon took a slight at Amazon. Amazon bandwidth. V By the way, here we go. It's here we go. <laughs> Motive. Yeah. Here we go. So now when I see something like this, this is... Um, this is very interesting. And by the way, love or hate him, man, Eric Prince said it's going to get very weird the next eight months. It has officially started. And when does this start? Ready? A day after Colorado 9-0 ruling? Really? Mm. Huh. The day of Super Tuesday? Hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's a little strange. Weird. The only word I, I can use. Very it's a odd. a little strange and odd hmm. for it to happen at the time that it does. <sighs> uh, phew. These are just little testers. Guys, these are just little test runs yeah, yeah. for when the big one's going to happen. Well, so everybody just be, just be. Only the paranoid survive. Damn it's right. It's something that's uh, only the paranoid. It, it's so, so let me go to the next story here before we wrap up. Maybe if we have time, we'll do one other story after this. Ryan Garcia's ex-wife says Boxer may seem fine. But he's not. Uh, Vinny, you were showing a few different videos. What was, uh, I, which video there was, was it? There was one. It's, 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 oh, the video that he reacted. Can you show the video of him reacting? If you go on Twitter, he posted a video. Just go to his account on Twitter. He posted a video of they took this from me. They took that from me. Does it not? And, and, and before you see it, doesn't it? Guys, I've seen him. Late, like, you've seen Ryan Garcia. He's, you know, he's vocal. He's energetic. He looks. First of all, I don't know. Did he take it down, Rob? Oh, uh, go uh, Lore. Is, are you on his account? I am. He's go, been tweeting a lot the past. Go a little I mean, look, these You'll are see all... him. He's in a jacket, right? Yeah. That's the and by the way, I don't know where he's sitting, but look look how off this is. About, he just came back online, basically. Go back. Play it. Look at him. Hey, guys. It's me, Ryan. Uh, I'm coming on here to explain what's going on. I'm not in possession of my phone. I can't get access to my Instagram. Uh, my cards are locked. And I'm just being real, you know, I'm being real taken advantage. And um, I personally wanted just to send out a video to the people that love me and my fans and family that's concerned that I'm okay. I'm not dead. I believe in Jesus. All those are lies. And, you know, I've, they try to put me in jail. They're blocking my cards. I can't access my money. Nobody's hitting me back. I don't know what's going on, but um, just know I'm okay. Look. Okay. I, okay. L first of all, let's address. He he looks like he's under duress. He looks like he. By the way, they. Um, here comes the word they. They they locked his accounts. He can't get. He doesn't have access to his phone. What what's really going on with this guy? Kind of looked like a hostage video. It looks like a hostage. And, and Adam, is he in the airport? Where, dude? He looks shook as hell. I, like I mean, you know, you know, Tate talks about the Matrix and stuff. Has he been speaking about 
the matrix or the system or what what is going and besides drugs and i've heard rumors about all that stuff but something's odd because the first video that we showed um uh in the podcast prep he's and we showed up with sean o'malley he's in a room cryptic running oh my god oh my god and then he went he went dark for 24 hours and nobody was getting back this is the video right here the last post that he did and it's somebody going we got him boy r.i.p ryan garcia He's running and then it goes oh, and it cuts out. I don't, I don't know about that. And then, so Rob, can you play the other clip with Devin Haney? Uh, 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 check your text, Rob. If you can uh, play the other clip with Devin Haney in the press conference with De La Hoya standing behind him. What do you think, Pat? Like, I, like, and you, by the way, he was sitting here. You have spoken yeah. to him. When did you interview Something's him? How long ago, Pat? Two How long weeks ago was that? A couple of weeks ago. Two weeks ago. We Something's off, Adam. Adam. Something's what, not right. What was your Take good, bad, ugly of Garcia. I mean, look, give a 23, 24, 25 year old 40 million bucks. Give him the incredible genes to be extremely handsome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Women love him. Okay. And, you know, you're famous 10, 11 million followers on Instagram. Okay. Everywhere you go, mm -hmm. people want you to, you know, you can kick I, anyone's ass I, running I, to for I, the most part. I messaged him. I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm uncomfortable with what's going on with him. But watch this one here with uh, uh, oh. this. This is a press conference. Go ahead and play this. Is that Mario Lopez? At the end of the day, you know, I want to clarify some Stop things. Stop the coke. Nigga, it's fucking up your voice. I, 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 want, I, I, want to, I, want, I want to clarify some things. I want to clarify some things. I don't do cocaine. I would do, I would do a live Stop. drug test. What do you do? I will do a what do you do? drug test. What I, do you do? I drink and I smoke weed, and so has the majority of this room. At the end of the day. It's, it's something. By the way, for him to say in that room, I am not dead, obviously. I love Jesus Christ. Something is going on that's deeper than just him in that video. He doesn't look mm -hmm. right, bro. And I think uh, his, his wife or his ex-wife just came out, and she made a public statement saying that... Uh, He's out of it. Just she used a specific word, but I wouldn't. I, I don't know, but she made I, a statement. Basically, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying I, to dude, like all we could do is hope on. and pray for this dude, but it doesn't look like he's going down and the then right path. I, I saw this past weekend. He did a FaceTime with. I believe you can uh, please Jake Paul after his fight. I guess he's like, "Well, fuck you! I'm gonna kick your ass, whatever." Uh, he's just. It seems like he's getting fire from all sides right now. Two months he, ago, him and his wife got a divorce. Okay. Yeah. So he has twins, I believe. And um, his wife says, who divorced him from the family, eased some concerns late Sunday. As she short fans, she had been in contact with him, but claimed that the fighter was not okay. What's up? But the coach says, yes, Ryan is okay. He's just trolling the wrong way. The coach wrote in a response mm -hmm. to the fan asking if Garcia was okay. So, look, um, a, a part of this is... Everything with what's going on here, 80% of it, it's on him. But the 20% that's not on him, it's the people that are around him. You know, my friend uh, uh, Steve, Steve, Afo, these guys, when we would go out to dinner, you've met these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Armand, one of the things that. The guys. One of the things that, uh, uh, specifically Steve, one of the things that they had is. Steve would call out all his friends. Very natural uh, state that it was. And then, but they would also call him out when things were off. And, you know, you're kind of going through that mode. And what eventually happens, happens to a man is when you know you're making a bad decision and you know it's not good, the people that you used to call out that want to call you out and have a private conversation with you, you don't want to talk to them. Because you know you're doing something wrong. And when you go in, the, in this spiral of self-sabotage and you're just destroying yourself, what you need the most is to be around the people that are not afraid to tell you the truth, to say, hey, what the hell are you doing? And I said this yesterday with Sean O'Malley. A part of this, if Mayweather is claiming that he's in his ear, this behavior has changed the closer you got to Mayweather. So Mayweather almost needs to come out publicly and say something and say, hey, this is not what I support. Because this is not Mayweather. Mayweather didn't do stuff like this. No way. De La Hoya, different story. Yeah. Mayweather, no. So, you know, it's um, whoever's in your ear, whatever example you got, whoever's giving you the feedback, whatever direction you're being fed, uh, those people have to have a come to Jesus type of a meeting here because... 
This fight with Devin Haney that's on 420, that's what, five weeks from now or six weeks from now? Do you know there's a high likelihood that that fight may not even happen? I agree. If this keeps going this way, don't be surprised if any time this week or next week the fight's been canceled. Damn. I'm going even deeper, but God forbid something bad happens to yeah. him just in general, bro. Like that, this is something is really, really. I had a, I had a friend that behaved like this, and, <sighs> and uh, it's not. It's very hard what you have to do with that friend. When a friend's going through something like this, you have to you have to take him to rehab. And I know the biggest challenge is public embarrassment. If you do go to a place like that, because it's so you're so famous, what's the market going to say about you? Uh, last night's dinner with the folks that we had dinner with. You know what's the best thing he said last night at the dinner? Stop thinking you matter as much as you do. Hmm. In two days, everyone's going to forget about Great it. Great point. Meaning, yeah, it's going to be em- embarrassing for about a few days. Trust me, a week later, everyone's dealing with their own embarrassing things in their personal life that they're going to go on. You are not that important to people's personal life. They're all going to move on. That mindset is going to let you come out and say, look, I'm going through some shit like Jordan Peterson. Yeah. who was like the guy, 12 rules for life for men at this home. This is the example. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm addicted to painkillers. Pain killers. You know who's the last interview he did with in front of 6,000 people where he was crying? With me. I'm the last interview he did. And right after the interview, I said, something's going on with Jordan. He was not normal. Something was hurting him. Mm-hmm. He, takes a, he goes to Russia to a rehab facility, and his daughter was publicly announcing it to everybody, Michaela Peterson, on what he was going through. But he was addicted to pain medication. And when he came back, I was one of the first ones that interviewed him. He seemed off. Hmm. He wasn't back. And he was, now he's back to being who he was before. But it took a minute. Guess what? That was very embarrassing. He went through it. Who's over it? The world. No one cares. He just wrote another book and is doing great. And his first book did great. And he's touring, I think, I don't know, $40 million being made on tours. Everywhere he goes, sells out like this. So America is a place of redemption. But if you stay in this mode for too long... No one wants to see anything bad happen to this guy that he's going through this. And um, you, 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 I don't want to say this, but he, uh, very uncomfortable when somebody uses Jesus as a mechanism to stop others to criticize because you're hiding behind you know, don't judge me because, you know, only God can judge me and you know the whole, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you're kind of leveraging that part. You're abusing, a, you're flirting with abusing uh, God and Jesus in ways that is a little bit deceptive and manipulative. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't think that's really deep down inside how you feel. And um, I hope he adjusts. Sent him a text message yesterday, but I hope he adjusts. We'll see what's going to happen there. Anyways, prayers going out to this guy because... Uh, the game of boxing, he made it exciting. It was fun to watch him. I hope he's still got a long career ahead of him. He can fight for another 10 years, right. if not longer. But one bad decision can destroy your life. I hope he's not making it. I think it's fair to say we're we're saying this out of genuine <laughs> love. I had him at my certain. house. We had dinner. Yeah, it's, I uh, mean, we're rooting for the rooting. guy. We spent a lot of time yeah. with him at Soho House, here, around. He's a, he's, he's a good dude. Uh, he's just in a rough patch right now, and, and I, I don't think it, the divorce – I don't think the drinking is helping uh, at all. Uh, I just think at the end of the day, we're rooting for the guy. I think he's a sweet dude. And uh, and Pat, you mentioned Oscar De La. I mean, you mentioned Oscar De La Hoya. Is that is that his promoter? Who is he? That's, that's his, his production company. company. He should be the number one dude. He's standing behind no, he's him. He's not the best example. He's not. I was just going to say not, that. Not De La Hoya is not. He, he, no. No. Really? He he goes out. He's out no, in the. No, De La Hoya is not. Uh, you know. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. the, listen, <laughs> yeah. the, again, another guy that was freaking awesome to watch and his fight against Mayweather, he almost beat Mayweather. Like this guy is not like a regular fighter. This guy's a freaking ridiculous guy. Oscar De La Hoya, this guy, Ryan Garcia is reminiscent of Oscar De La Hoya, yeah. right? And they look like, alike. He looks dude. like his son, by the way. Yeah, yeah. he really does. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I know you have a history with De La Hoya, so I don't want to get into yeah. any like that. But this guy was a champ. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the example that he sets, but Ryan Garcia would be lucky to be the next Oscar De La Hoya. He was that good. Yep. I don't know what's going on with him now, though. All right. Well, this is the last story we're doing, gang. Uh, again, text the word podcast to 310-340-1132 uh, in case things go down, and we can do it elsewhere. Text the word podcast to 310-340-1132. Tomorrow we're doing a podcast, Rob, with Andy uh, Stumpf. Yes, I believe sir. we have that going on with a Navy SEAL. He's also on Manect, which wow. is exciting to Sick. have him on. That's going to be exciting stuff. Uh, Thursday, we're going to be back to home team. Uh, Friday, we're going to be with Candace Owens and Chris Cuomo at the club, 5990 Live. 
And uh, you, in the month of April, you're doing Miami Improv. Miami Improv. Thank you, Pat. April 11th at 8 p.m. You can go on improv.com. Uh, By Tainers represent. We're, we're Show do, up, scream, holler. Everyone's going to be We're doing there. the value tame and yeah. take over. Yes. And it's going to be April 11th. Please go to Miami Improv, April 11th. Click on it. Or go on my Insta. Well, Instagram's down. But my, the ticket, the <laughs> we'll ticket put the link. link. Oh, right I love here. you. We're going to yeah. put the link here. Look, what picture is that? Pat? Well, like, I look like I'm going to prison. And what's with the V-I-N-N-Y, Vin? The, they, guess what? They're not. I'm making that phone call. We're going to talk to my agent. They don't want this, this album to come uh, out. But I appreciate it. Take care. We'll do this again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.